Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my January 2020 update video for, you guessed it, January 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update vlogs, we're going to go over some personal life stuff, as well as YouTube stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing you probably notice is just how shitty I sound. <laughs> so... If you can't tell from my voice, I'm getting over a cold, flu, plague of death that's been going on around uh, the guest house here. And uh, I'm feeling better, even though I don't sound better. Uh, the worst of it's definitely far, for, far over. Um, so I'm just basically waiting for all the phlegm and all that kind of fun stuff to, to pass. But, uh, you know, other than that, feeling pretty good. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to talk about because I've already done so many other videos on my other channels, but, uh, I guess for this one, we'll just, uh, go over, you know, the, uh, youtube -y stuff as well as personal life stuff. So, um, we'll kind of intermingle them in this, uh, this raw up date because, uh, going to be working on some more Andy Japani videos, like right after I get done with this video, because I got my laptop all right there, ready to go. And uh, I'm just going to get cracking on some more vids. So I recorded, I think we're down to like four vids now, um, out and about in Tokyo. I just went to a couple shops and just kind of showed you around. And uh, I also did some voiceover for those videos because uh, I did a little experiment on the Andy Japan channel just to kind of see um, what you guys like, what you guys don't like, and just kind of get get more a feel of the direction of the content for that channel as far as like how I want to present things so I've just been doing a lot of experimenting you know trying to you know maybe do some voiceover stuff maybe not do some voiceover stuff put myself in the thumbnail take myself out just you know trying out little things to see what works and what don't and for the past couple videos I tried doing them without any voiceover or a roll of my big old head explaining things or give my opinions on things and uh i mean it was kind of cool but after like the first minute you know it was kind of boring at least in my opinion but i wanted to try it out see how you guys liked it and it seems like a lot of you guys kind of echoed my sentiments so don't worry we're gonna be bringing back some voiceover for upcoming Andy japandy episodes also want to do some more A-roll stuff in the future, but because uh, these next four or so videos have already been recorded, they're all in the can. We'll just uh, stick with voiceover for now, but uh, moving forward, definitely want to do some A-roll stuff. But it's kind of hard, you know, man? Like, uh... <coughs> excuse me. It's kind of hard, you know? It's just, uh, you got to worry about copyright music in the background, and Japan likes to play a lot of that stuff, and you know, it's not like with American copyright where, yeah, they might monetize the video and that's it. You can't make anything off of it. But like Japanese copyrights, like take down the video and they're, they're like super anal about that kind of stuff. So I got to be very careful about where I do the A-roll and things like that and use little tricks and stuff to kind of mask some of the background noise. So got to be careful about that stuff, you know, but uh, definitely we'll be doing more. Uh, voiceover, more A-roll, things like that. So it's kind of ironic. The guy that never shot any B-roll is like, yo, where's that A-roll at? So uh, it's full circle, right? But yeah, uh, I'm going to be working on some of them vids coming up. Um, got some ideas for some Andy Talks Japandy episodes as well that I want to do. And stuff like that, you know? Like I said, uh, the Andy Japandy channel is my main focus right now. Um, this channel is just kind of personal life stuff, things, and just kind of, uh, mm, excuse me, just like miscellaneous content that doesn't really fall under the, uh, the niches of the other channels. And I like this background. I actually have interesting backgrounds now here at the guest house. It's pretty cool. You know, I got the little, uh, bookshelf, you know, the fish tank, statues, Fucking chandelier, check that fucking shit out. Of course, you got clothes and shit hanging in the background, but uh, yeah, I got interesting shit in the background now. So it's not just the usual plain beige walls that you've been seeing for the past like four plus years. So that's pretty cool. 
yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, the yet tubby stuff. So let's get on with some personal life stuff. So as you guys know, if you don't know now, now you know, I'm in Japan. <laughs> Pretty obvious. But uh, yeah, been here for uh, going on a month. Time is recording. It'll be a month in like three days or so. And uh, it's been fun, man. You know, like getting used to um, Japan life once again, living with other people. Um, even though I was in Japan when I was in the Navy, I felt like um, it was kind of like Japan on training wheels in a way. And you could say the same thing about me living in like a guest house with international peeps and stuff like that, speaking, well, kind of a mix of English, you know, but, uh, you know, you could say that, you know, going to an English school and all those kinds of stuff. But uh, it's definitely a lot less handholdy than when it was in the military, you know, where they, you know, if you wanted to get a place out in town, they pretty much handled it on base and they had liaisons to deal with uh, the non-English speaking people. So here, you know, you don't have Uncle Sam holding your hand. So you gotta, gotta put on your big boy pants or your big girl pants for the, uh, the, the three female <laughs> viewers of my stuff. Um, and uh, just, you know, do your thing, man. And, you know, there was a lot of, uh, of anxiety and stuff that I had, especially as things were getting closer. You know, my flyout date was getting closer to coming out here. You know, I was worried about, am I going to have enough money? Um, how, how am I going to even make this thing work? Because I've been in Japan in over four years. Um, I mean, I did take some Japanese classes when I was in Michigan, but it was very textbooky type stuff. And once I wrapped up with those classes, didn't really practice Japanese at all because not really a whole lot of opportunities to do so. I mean, yeah, you could do the hello talk thing, but just the time zone difference. I mean, it'd be different if I lived on the West Coast, be a little easier, but I was on East Coast, man. That, that just sucked as far as time time zone difference. But yeah. Um, so didn't really practice a whole lot of Japanese and uh, was... Uh, <laughs> swiftly reminded about just how much I still need to to learn to function out here. So that's going to be one of my goals moving forward uh, since moving out here. But uh, I just wanted to take a little bit of time to kind of get used to uh, things out here before I really delve into like language and stuff like that. And plus, ultimately, you know, as TQ Sam would say, at the end of the day, guys, <laughs> freaking, you know, my visa isn't reliant on my ability to speak Japanese, it's all on my grades in school. And no, I haven't signed up for any Japanese classes at school because I learned that lesson last time. You know, if you're going to, you know, just I just don't want to attach my ability to learn a language to my GPA and thus my visa. You know, <laughs> I just don't want to do that because that's very stressful and I'd rather just kind of learn in the environment and you know just sit down with like Anki or Wanikani or you know maybe even bust out the old Genki textbooks or something like that and just kind of do it on my own time basically and just have school stuff be school stuff you know just have a separation of that sort of thing so but yeah that's definitely going to be one of the things I work on while I'm out here in addition to school stuff video stuff no, speaking of video stuff, um, I did apply to be a video editor for some well-known YouTubers out here in Tokyo. Uh, one, Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan, as well as uh, Norm from Tokyo Lens. They're both looking for editors. So I threw my oversized size 8 hat in the ring and uh, sent them CV and all that kinds of stuff. So uh, we'll see what happens, but... Uh, you know, I'm still going to keep my eyes out for some video editing work and just opportunities for uh, myself to get in there, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, what's going on in the life of the old Andy San Sam Modesta. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And we're going to do the good old end credits wave. So... Yeah, 
just let me know what you guys have been thinking of the uh, recent Andy Japandi episodes and if there's any places that you'd like me to, to see and things you want me to talk about because I'm definitely game so long as I got the coin. So, yeah, really looking forward to making new episodes. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye, guys. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome to my February 2020 update video for, you guessed it, February 2020. Woo. So, yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're going to go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And today, I decided to go outside on this lovely day. I have my jacket fully open because it's just so nice out. And we're gonna do this one raw because I got a whole bunch of other videos I'm gonna be working on later on today. So, I just have to deal. Anyway guys, uh, let's go over some YouTube stuff. So, as you guys know, I've been spending most of my time on the Andy Japandi channel. And I gotta say, really been loving the interaction and the comments, uh, views, all that kinds of stuff for my uh, videos that are up there so far. Really been loving it. So grateful that you guys have been uh, so supportive for that channel. And I wanna continue to do more. So, <laughs> just making sure no one's gonna run me over. Not today, truck coon. Between truck coon and corona chan, gotta be, uh, gotta be on the, on the ready. <laughs> Cause you never know. But anyway. Uh, just really so thankful that you guys have been watching my stuff and leaving so many comments. Um, that's the reason I do YouTube, man. I mean, not just for views or money, but uh, for the comments. That stuff's my oxygen, not gonna lie. And uh, really been getting a whole lot of that O2, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely gonna be keeping it up. Um, as far as like upcoming videos, uh, right now, I'm going to be working on the uh, the Pokemon Center video, and uh, you know that one's been in the the back catalog for a while now, and you know just various things kind of kind of pushed it off. Um, most notably, uh, school is the main thing, which we'll get to here in a bit. But yeah, you know, just stuff happens, and I kind of wanted to pad out that those releases anyway, so just <laughs> kind of worked out that way. But yeah, the Pokemon Center video is going to be coming up, so I can't wait to show you guys that. And uh, beyond that, I'm really glad you guys are taken to the uh, the Andy Eats Japandi series. Um, it was just kind of a little, let's just do it type series where uh, I just go around and eat stuff basically and I really like the format of it you know just me kind of going back and forth between like the A roll and B roll that sort of thing rather than me just like talking the whole time I'm in the restaurant because like I'll be honest I do feel kind of weird like uh, you know talking while I'm eating at the place because especially in Tokyo restaurants are like really crowded and a uh, little ADD moment, but uh, look at all uh, the cherry blossoms. I think it's actually like dogwood or something. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> feels like spring has sprung, but uh, not yet. Those are just some of the uh, the early bloomers right there. But yeah, you know, it's just a, a nice series, you know, to put up on the channel, show you guys different uh, aspects of Japan. But the thing I want to focus on, you know, more. Uh, moving forward is uh, just kind of talking about what it's like to uh, be a study abroad student out here in my 30s. You know, like a lot of people I have seen that are uh, students out here, typically very early 20s. And, uh, you know, they're going to like a language school or something like that. And uh, I'm going out to a university in Tokyo. Um, and I'm 34, so what's that about, right? So I definitely want to uh, showcase more of that, and uh, hopefully that'll encourage some more old heads to come out here to Japan, because, you know, for me, age is a number, you know? Like, one thing, 
when I was in my 20s, I definitely was scared of turning 30. Um, if you've seen some of my uh, older videos, you'll know that, you know, getting to 30 was a big fear for me because, you know, I felt like when you turn, turn 30, you should have your shit figured out by then. But really, that's not the case at all. I mean, it's best if you do, but you don't have to, you know. Everybody's kind of going their own pace in life, really. And I'm just going to mine. That's the lesson I learned when I turned 30, is that I didn't really feel any different. You know, for me, my 30s are just like my 20s, but I know better. Ooh, dang old coffee burps, let me tell you. <laughs> Ooh, look at these pretty flowers. Zara's vlog is like so random. <laughs> That's what you get when you get it raw, baby. So, <coughs> in any event, um, but yeah, uh, like with my 30s and stuff like that, you know, I think with a lot of other people, they see, you know, turning 30 the same way I did when I was in my 20s as you should kind of have your life established by that point you know be married on your first second sometimes third kid and uh geez look at the shrine ain't that just the coolest <laughs> sorry ADD moment anyway yeah you know 30s eh, i can go on about that but uh you know i, d I definitely want to encourage people um, that are, you know, older than 20, <laughs> basically. <coughs> if you're kind of going beyond the 20-somethings, closing in on your 30-somethings and above, definitely want to encourage you guys, you know, it's never too late to get your education, or it's never too late to uh, go travel or study abroad or any of that stuff, you know? And even money-wise, I mean, yeah, I know I'm on the GI Bill, so I got a lot of that stuff taken care of, but... If you guys have seen any of my um, other videos where I talk more about the GI Bill, then you'll know it's, I mean, as far as like paying for school and stuff like that, it's free unless you go to like a private university, but we're not going to get into that in this video. But, you know, it's uh, just one of them things where, uh, especially for the, uh, the BAH, you know, they only pay for the days that you go in school, so if you go a full month, you get the full BAH, but if you don't, then you only get a uh, partial BAH, and uh, you know, you gotta have something to, to cover down for the bills on those months where the GI Bill is a little scarce. So that's not something that was really um, talked about to me uh, when I was getting out, and nobody really mentions those sorts of things. So, you know, you definitely do have to have a job or a side hustle or even just, you know, a solid savings or all the above, ideally, to make it on the GI Bill. And especially going overseas, that's a whole nother component because, you know, there's a lot of jobs out there where, uh, you know, learning the language and being able to communicate effectively in the... Uh, the local language is essential. Now, Japan's case, <laughs> I could get a job teaching English or something like that where I don't really have to speak any Japanese, but you know, if you want to interact with the coworkers or something like that, then you know, <laughs> you're not gonna get very far with uh, with English for the most part. So let me switch bridges here. Yeah, I'm just walking really on the uh, Nakano Shimbashi type area, I guess. So, <coughs> excuse me. Old Corona Chan ain't gonna get me today. No, sir. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, it's just uh, a whole other set of circumstances and stuff. And, uh, yeah. So I definitely do want to talk more about those types of, of topics kind of show you, you know, day in the life of a college student in Japan, in his 30s, all that kind of stuff, because that's 
a wholly untapped market. Like the only other person I know that has talked about that is uh, Loretta from the Kushichan channel. And she's actually the one that really inspired me to, to talk about those things when I got out here. You know, I've been following her stuff for years. And uh, yeah, she's just been a huge inspiration. And I just hope to get as good as her with the, uh, the Yabonese, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, someday, someday. <laughs> But yeah, um, as far as personal life stuff goes, I don't have much time left on the thing, but uh, as far as personal life stuff goes, been okay. Um, you know, going to class, all that kind of fun stuff. You know, not really too much to report there. Uh, midterms are coming up, so I gotta get ready for that. And it seems like, you know, I just started the semester. We already got midterms and stuff, so yeah. Life's moving fast. So, yeah, I think it's going to do it for this little raw bliggity vlog update. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. That's it for now. And as always, see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And we're going to do the old in card wave. So, look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments down below in the boogity boops. So, yeah gonna be fun <laughs> i don't really have a question but yeah all right bye guys hey guys andy here and today on the andy san channel <laughs> it is uh february 29th 2020 woo and just want to wish all y'all a happy leap year happy leap day and even though you can't see it, you're probably wondering what all that big lights and stuff is. This is the uh, Madhouse uh, headquarters, uh, the anime company Madhouse. They made um, such series like No Game to Life, stuff like that. Um, no word on season two, <laughs> by the way. So they ain't talking. But yeah, I'm just out for a little nightly walk. And I want to make a little raw bliggity vlog here just to let y'all know what's been going on. and stuff like that and to uh, celebrate leap day which only comes around once every four years and uh, I've had a pretty good streak going for these past uh, couple ones and uh, want to keep the, keep it alive you know what I'm saying so pretty crazy to think that uh, <laughs> I'm back in Japan for uh, this one actually 2016 no I wasn't in Japan for any of the other previous leap years I just thought of that actually because uh, the first one that I posted, that I posted specifically for Leap Day, was in 2012, and I was in San Diego back then. And the next one was 2016, and I was in Michigan for that one. But now, I'm out here in Japan, right by the Lawsons. <laughs> so, just want to make a little video talking about that. Anyway, rambling, I know, I know. So, yeah, I want to get into more, like, up-to-date stuff. But I want to save that for tomorrow because tomorrow is March 1st, which will mark my 14 year anniversary on the platform. And, uh, you know, 14 year anniversary for this channel as well. I mean, same thing, right? Um, but yeah, just there's been a whole lot of stuff that's been going on. If you guys have been following me on my uh, Andy Japani channel, you kind of know a little bit about all that stuff. But yeah, you know, just want to do a little monthly. It, it, these leap year, leap day videos are kind of strange because like literally the next day is like uh, my YouTube anniversary. And it's like, I don't want to give away too much, but at the same time, it's like, I gotta give you something. So I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just got back from Saksa went and got uh, got a new uh, little thing for the selfie stick, the little like cell phone holder. Went and got that, and uh, I'm using it in videos moving forward, so my face isn't too close to the camera. So there you go, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, I also got uh, internet for the phone. Obviously, <laughs> that was like the main thing I did when I was out in the Saksa. And uh, definitely want to do a video out there. I mean, it's obviously a played out kind of tourist location. There's just a lot of tourists out there. You think with uh, old Kelowna Chan running rampant out here, there wouldn't be so many of them, but no, they were uh, out in full force. So, yeah. <laughs>
there is a diminished uh, amount of tourism out here. I don't see it. And maybe it's in other parts like Kyoto or something like that, but it's uh, definitely quite strong out in Saksa. But yeah, tomorrow, my 14 year anniversary on YouTube. And uh, it's just crazy to think, you know, and I say this with every every anniversary, so it's nothing new. It's like, oh, it's crazy to think, you know, I've been on the platform for so long, dude. You know, and uh, some people might be thinking like, well, why do I like keep doing this? You know, like what's like the driving force for me to do all this? And it's, you know, just honestly, just cause I love doing it really. You know, that's, that's number one. And uh, you know, number two is uh, documenting because like I go back and look at some of my older videos, even the, even the fat and depressing ones when I was out in uh, Michigan, I still kind of go back and look at them and just kind of laugh. You know, like when I was, right before I did the thing here for the Leap Day video, I looked back at my other two Leap Day videos. And I think I have another one from like 08, but uh, I didn't look at that one yet. Anyway, um, so I was looking back at the other ones and it's just crazy to see, you know, me back in the Navy barracks when I was still in A school in San Diego. And the other one where I was in my first apartment out in Michigan. And then out here in friggin' Nakano, <laughs> where I'm living now, out here in Tokyo. Uh, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> it's funny, you know, I haven't stayed in a place for more than four years. But uh, such is the life of a rolling stone. And just look at that friggin' skyline. Friggin' love this shit right here. It's the best. Uh, I just gotta get a camera that can properly capture it because it's all grainy and shit now but such is life such is life um, yeah tomorrow gonna do a uh, you know a big update anniversary video with a selfie stick so my face isn't too close to the camera and uh, I might shave I don't know probably not <laughs> I'll probably forget but yeah just want to come on here wish everybody happy leap year leap day is it a happy leap year or a happy leap day? I don't freaking know. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, just uh, want to thank you guys for supporting this channel. And uh, if you're also on my Andy Japandy channel, uh, for, <laughs> thank you for supporting me for that as well. Sorry, I was looking around for cars. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for the support, all the comments, all that stuff. It's just been the best. <laughs> and uh, definitely want to keep on putting out that quality content for you guys uh, on all the channels you know but uh, yeah so with all that said guys this is the Andy Son signing up for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye and of course we're gonna do the old in card wave as they look like a fucking lunatic walking around here waving to people but uh, what you gonna do, right? Show and I, my guy. So, all right. <laughs> oh wait, a couple more seconds. All right, <laughs> bye guys. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on the Andy Son channel, I'm gonna be doing my March 2020 update video for you guessed it, March 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update day videos, gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing you probably notice is the fact that uh, my face isn't taking up the whole fucking frame. And uh, that's all thanks to the uh, selfie stick. I'm a good old buddy. Tikio Sam uh, lent me and also got a little selfie uh, cell phone holder as well from uh, Big Camera the other day. So now we can do this vlog proper and I'm not taking up the whole fucking frame. So, know what I'm saying? In any event, let's get on with YouTube -y stuff. So, I've uh, been really most active on the Andy Japani channel and really been loving you guys' uh, feedback on everything. You know, I've been making a bunch of different series just trying to like figure out what type of stuff to make basically and just kind of see what does well, what kind of stuff you guys seem to like and uh, you know, starting to dial it in. 
So, um, started up a raw vlog series, basically answering questions about what it's like to uh, study abroad out here in Tokyo. And uh, they're actually pretty easy to make because it's just literally just like no editing. You go out there, you do your thing, next video, okay. So especially, you know, especially you know, with being a student and having to deal with tests and homework and all that kind of stuff, I don't want me making uh, YouTube videos to interfere with that. So I figured it was kind of the best way to do things. And uh, you know, you guys seem to really like the series and uh, I wanna keep doing more of them. So I'm gonna, whether you like it or not. Well, you guys seem to like it, so okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> that's uh, basically what's going on with the uh, the old Andy Japani channel. And as for this channel, um, <laughs> I feel like I don't give this channel enough love because you know I'm so busy with the Andy Japani stuff, and then aside from YouTube, you know, just busy with school life and just you know getting used to things especially with uh recent events as you guys have no doubt seen in the news and whatnot um it's been uh, a lot of change and not a lot of time so yeah but uh enough being around the uh the bush or the bush there we go <laughs> it's finally in frame so enough of that um now let's talk about some personal life stuff. So, like I said, as you guys know, it's been going on in the news as of late. Um, I can't say the name of the thing that's going around Southeast Asia, but if you've been following the news for any bit of time, y'all know what it is. It's like fucking Voldemort. I can't say the name, but y'all know what it is. I guess we'll just call it Kelowna Chan. That's the new thing I've been calling it. So hopefully, uh, Things don't, uh, you know, YouTube doesn't get all like, mm, can't be talking about that. Anyway, uh, so with all that been going on, um, you know, schools around the country have been closing down because uh, Abe put out, now he technically, because I got some people in the comments saying, well, technically Abe actually, you know, highly requested that schools shut down. He didn't actually order them to shut down, so, there you go. He uh, strongly advised schools out here in Japan to uh, shut down for a couple weeks, about a month, I think, altogether, to uh, get them from uh, preventing them from getting uh, Kelowna Chan and uh, hosting her parties, we'll say. And uh, that's going to go into effect tomorrow. Actually, it's gonna start this coming Monday at times recording and uh, we'll see how it goes and they've also been uh, following suit with uh, some universities as well. So um, my university, Lakeland University of Japan, has also followed suit and uh, <clears throat> they're gonna be closing down uh, the campus for two weeks and uh, we're basically just gonna be teleschooling so um, you know, just basically be uh, submitting homework on Blackboard and, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a dry air, it's not Kelowna Chan, I swear to God. Anyway, um, so we'll basically just be doing stuff on Blackboard and stuff like that. So, you know, everything's proceeding as normal. All according to Keikoku, desi yo nay. Anyway. Um, just be keeping going with that. It's not gonna interfere with uh, visa, GI Bill payments, I hope, <laughs> or anything like that. So just business as usual. And as I told you guys in the previous video, you know, I've done teleschooling before. I've had classes that were taught entirely online. And look, look at them plum blossoms, or yeah, I think they're plum blossoms. Yeah, look at that shit. Fucking love Japan, gotta say. Yeah, I've done classes entirely online before, so it's nothing new. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of is what it is. And hey, you know, I don't have to pay train fare to get back and forth to class anymore for the next two weeks anyway. So it's a win-win it's a according to me and uh, stuff like that. So I gotta wait for these fucking cars. Just, 
God damn, I got a whole fucking platoon of bikes right now. God damn. Shit on my dad's dick. <laughs> That's not gonna get this video monetized. What? I didn't hear you. Anyway, um, <laughs> I guess I've been hanging around Tiki Sam a little too much. But, uh, so basically, where the fuck was I? I don't even fucking remember. But yeah, I've just been so distracted by these goddamn plum blossoms. It's just so fucking sexy right now. I'm gonna tell you right now. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but as far as uh, me worrying about like getting uh, the uh, the invite to the party hosted by Kelowna Chan, yeah, I ain't worried. <laughs> you know. But you're probably asking, well, Andy Sam, why ain't you wearing a mask? You know, she wore a mask and he's gonna wear a mask and all this other shit. Um, that shit's just designed to keep stuff from coming out, not from coming in. So, y'all just got a deal. You know what I'm saying? So, that's how it is. <laughs> Look at them plum blossoms. They're fucking in bloom and it's fucking glorious. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, am I afraid of getting it? No, nah, not really. Because uh, I wash my hands and I got that alcohol hand gel. Uh, cost me a lot of money to do it, but hey, I got it. So, you know how it is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, as long as I keep my hands clean, and uh, the humidifier's really been helping out a lot, I gotta say. Um, you know, keeping the lungs nice and moist. Um, so that way, I don't get the invite to Kelowna Chan's party. So, it's kind of tis what it is. And, uh, sure to keep you guys posted as things roll on out here oh look at this shit fucking glorious i love it this is one of the things i miss about japan was just even though it's fucking tokyo so like not really nature nature but just you know just all this nice little bits here like look at this what the fuck is this look at this <laughs> You don't see that walking around in Ohio, let me tell you. It's just fucking corn and uh, beans on the off seasons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I'm just gushing right now, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it as far as uh, personal life updates, you know, classes kind of going as it is, <laughs> I told you. Um, as far as me personally, um, if you're wondering about weight loss updates, um, I'm hitting pretty steadily at 108 kilos. Uh, kind of goes up maybe a little bit here and there. But things have been pretty steady at 108, which is like two, 238, 239 pounds. Um, something like that. Just look at all these flowers. Goddamn, look at that shit. <laughs> so yeah, around a little less than 240 pounds. Been staying pre pretty consistent there. Um, as far as uh, getting some more exercise in, definitely do want to get a bike. But uh, considering my weight, I'm kind of limited in my choices. So I can't just grab a cheap ass Jitensha Mama Chari. Um, I have to get a mountain bike because those are a lot more uh, thick boy friendly. You know what I'm saying? And uh, plus, I really, I really miss my old Hummer bike. You know, that's one of the reasons I got it while I was out here was so I can easily pick it out when uh, I go grocery shopping or whatever. Because a, a bright yellow fucking mountain bike easily stands out out here. So it's really easy to pick out in a line. But uh, I'm gushing. So, so in any event, guys, I think we'll end things here as soon as I get closer because I got to get this nice closing shot for the uh, the end card so with that said guys this is the Andy San signing for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye and just look at all them plum blossoms we got some stuff over here too it's a little different a little different but uh, same same so We'll get back to this. <laughs> so you got a little something nice to look at. <laughs> Alright. Bye guys. Ugh.
Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my April 2020 update video for, you guessed it, April 2020. Woo! So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna talk about as far as YouTube stuff goes is the fact that I don't have my laptop right now. So that's why this video is raw, baby. And uh, the reason behind that is I sent my laptop to the Asus store out in Akasaka to get it fixed because the backlight has been acting up on me for the past couple months. And it finally gave up the ghost last week to where I can't see anything on the screen, even though the actual computer itself is fine. Um, and I didn't want to spend a bunch of extra money on an external monitor that I don't have a lot of space for in the box. And I don't want to lug it around, you know, so since it was still under warranty, I decided to take it out to the Asus store to get it fixed. And they were able to uh, get it fixed with uh, no charge. So that's always a plus. But the thing is, they got to send it out to the Asus factory, wherever that is, and uh, see if they have any available, available parts to get it fixed. But because of Kelowna Chan World Tour, it has affected the availability of parts. So they did say it could take up to a couple months to get it fixed. But considering what the problem is, my guess is that it's probably just a ribbon cable that either got unplugged or ripped up from me like opening and closing the laptop and stuff. So if it's something as simple as that, then I could see my laptop back to me within maybe a week or two at most. So I'm not super worried about it, but should it come to waiting like a couple months, like they said, you know, I got my trusty phone right here to uh, help me with a lot of things, including writing my final essays, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. So continuing on with the YouTube -y stuff, um, because of what's going on in the world right now with Kelowna Chan tour, world tour in full effect, raw baby, um, it feels really tone deaf to be making videos about Japan right now. Just because a lot of the stuff on my Andy Japani channel has always been with the undertone of, yeah, visit Japan, come out to Japan, come study abroad in Japan. You know, that was the general, you know, messaging behind my videos. And under any other circumstance, I'm super okay with that. And that's kind of the, the message that I do want to get across to you guys is I want you guys to come visit Japan. And you know, if you want to study abroad, come out here. But Again, considering what's going on in the world right now, I mean, if you're watching this in the future, greetings, but uh, what's going on in the world right now, it just feels really tone deaf to be posting that type of content, especially with uh, lockdowns and uh, travel bans and other sorts of restrictions in place. So for the time being, I'm gonna be focusing on my other channels. Now, that being said, um, I am gonna post like a little wrap up type video once the semester is all done, basically kind of sharing my thoughts on my first uh, semester <laughs> studying abroad out here in Tokyo and just my experience being back in Japan and just the overall experience that I've gone through these past four months during this uh, very interesting time in uh, world history and also share grades and stuff like that as well. And maybe do a live stream or two here and there, just kind of catching up with you guys. But uh, yeah, for the time being, I want to focus mostly on different types of content. And speaking of that content, um, I want to be making some more video editing tutorials because my editing channel, edited by the Andy san has been put on hiatus pretty much ever since I moved out to Japan because I was building up the Andy Japandi channel. But uh, since, you know, Japan content's kind of, you know, <laughs> not really in vogue right now, uh, I want to be focusing more on editing tutorials. And since I don't have my laptop, uh, I can't exactly work with Premiere Pro, right? So I'm gonna try the uh, next best thing and do Premiere Rush, which is a mobile video editor. Um, I've never really messed with it too much. I may have dabbled a little bit here and there just to kind of get the basics, but I think it's going to be really fun for me to uh, try to put together stuff just entirely on the phone and try to learn a new video editor. So should 
something like my laptop being in the shop happen, then I'll have somewhat of a solution for edited content. But again, I gotta learn it. And then once I learn it, I'll uh, drop some tutorials. And then once the uh, laptop comes back, then I want to make some more Premiere tutorials and maybe uh, tutorials on other things, other types of software. That involves video editing, just a little hint, hint right there. And in addition to that, <clears throat> I also want to focus on building a, uh, a podcast. But before I get into that, I do need to uh, have like a, a private room for something like that. That's kind of my main um, holdback from why I'm not doing the podcast right now is that I just I need a private room to record so I can get that nice crisp quality audio but I got the idea to do a podcast um, from a uh, media project that I did this semester and it was meant to be a human interest piece on somebody presented in some media format so the uh, the criteria was was very broad and originally I was going to do like a video interview where I'd set up cameras and do this, that, and the other. But uh, due to Kelowna Chan World Tour, kind of put the uh, the old kibosh, as I like to say, on on things. And especially like one-on-one -on -one gatherings and stuff like that. So um, I did, um, called an audible, and I decided to convert it to a podcast and just kind of did it that way. And I had so much fun putting that together because originally before I even did YouTube videos, I edited audio and whether it was just little tweaks to songs or whatever, or putting together just little talking sessions between me and my friends. Like, so it's kind of in a way going back to my roots in some aspects. And uh, I really enjoyed putting it together and I made it sound like a really legit podcast with like the little transitions and little back and forth banter and stuff like that. So I thought it was really well put together. Um, so I really enjoyed the process of, of doing that. So I want to kind of make that into a, a real life thing rather than just something contained within a, a school project. So um, once I get different accommodations, then uh, we make some headway on that. So until then, um, that's pretty much what I got. And then once uh, I get uh, some sounds and stuff recorded, then I'll be sure to let you guys know and we'll do the full launch of the channel. But uh, that being said, let's go into some personal news real quickly. So as you guys know, this is finals week. So it's the last big push of the semester. Mm, excuse me. And uh, I'm working on uh, final essays for one of my classes. And uh, so far, I'm about halfway through one of them. Then the other one, I got some basic preliminary type stuff I got to do. But this essay I'm working on is worth a bit more than the other one. So even if I just get this essay done this weekend, I'll consider it a success. And then I have until the end of the week to work on the other one. So, um, yeah, it's uh, just a matter of uh, putting in the time and uh, doing what's right and all that kinds of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I rented this hotel room to kind of get away from the, uh, the rigors of the box and all that kinds of stuff and to really focus in on the essay and the task at hand. And uh, I feel pretty good about it. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to finish this semester strong, be in a good headspace for things. And uh, once the semester is over and uh, grades are in the books, I'm able to get an official transcript then I'll start um, pinging these other colleges to uh, see where I can transfer next. Now I have two colleges <clears throat> on in my sites, and uh, those are Temple University Japan and International Christian University. So Temple has been my number one choice pretty much even before I came out here. I came out here with the intention of graduating from Lakeland and then going to Temple and getting my four year, and then going on from there. But uh, because they got their GI Bill funding pulled, um, it's really kind of put their viability, I guess, for me to come there in question. So I just need to kind of figure out where they are, 
as far as being able to receive GI Bill funding for oncoming students. Uh, current enrolled students are fine, so you don't have to worry about that. But for me, as an oncoming student, it's something i got to worry about. And uh, I just need to talk with them, see what's going on with that. And uh, if we can, you know, reach an agreement for me to come over, then uh, that'll be best because I already have uh, a guest house and stuff lined up in that area that looks really promising. Uh, still very reasonably priced, and it gives me my own private room. So uh, that'll help me with the podcast, among a bunch of other things. But alternatively, uh, International Christians University, I did some looking into it, and uh, they look to be a really good school, too. They're a bit west Tokyo, so a bit a little bit more rural than like Nakano or something like that. Um, which I think would be fine. It would be a good environment for me to be in, just something that's not so hustle-bustle. Um, and they have the program that I want and all this other stuff, so just a matter of getting in contact with them as well to kind of see, you know, if I could, if I fit in with my university. So, yeah, just uh, wrapping up the semester, anything strong, then we're going to move on from there. So, with all that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. Time for now. As always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Wash your damn hands. Stay inside. <laughs> Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Welcome once again to my April 2020 update video. Part two. So yeah, as we always do with these update videos, we're gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So breathe in that good ass prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. And let's start off with some YouTube stuff. Now you guys have probably been missing the live streams and been wondering where the heck is the old Andy San Sam Modesta. <laughs> so um, the reason I haven't been live streaming lately is because my Mobile data has been throttled uh, for the rest of the month, presumably. It pretty much makes doing anything online, you know, impractical beyond maybe checking Gmail or something like that. And even then it's 50-50. Mm, <laughs> so I'm pretty much just gonna be waiting until beginning of May to resume live streaming. But moving forward, I'll probably have to reduce the amount of times I stream. So whereas before I did it pretty much daily, um, I think this time around I'll probably have to make it either weekly or maybe twice a week at the most until I get uh, newer living accommodations, which we'll be getting into in the personal life section. And as far as uh, the editing tutorials goes, that's kind of falls under the same category as well because I want to have a nice quiet space to record the voiceover. I've toyed with the idea of maybe doing like voiceless tutorials and just having me like do the things and maybe have text pop-ups or something like that. But I want the uh, tutorials to have a fairly consistent format. So I don't want to, you know, maybe put out a couple tutorials that are voiceless and then, you know, once I get the private space, get back into voiceover tutorials. I think it's probably best just to wait until I get a private place to where I can uh, record once again. So hey, it's Andy from the future, and after I got done recording this video, I decided to uh, actually go ahead with the uh, text-based uh, video editing tutorials, just for the meantime, so that way I can still make some good tutorials, and then once I get the private room, then we'll be resuming the normal voiceover tutorials. So anyway, back to the update. And probably the biggest story that I gotta share as far as YouTube stuff goes is that I finally got my computer back. So it came back about a week or so ago from the Asus store. Just as soon as I got the computer back and the monitor was working, it stopped working once again. So I decided, fuck it, and uh, just went out and bought an external monitor and uh, just been rocking that ever since. And it's been working fine. But uh, it does limit, obviously, the usage of the laptop. I can't exactly take it with me to Starbucks. Not that there's any Starbucks open right now, but you know, you guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> it does kind of reduce the mobility of being able to use it. But in any event, um, I will be working on my back catalog of stuff that I had recorded several months ago. So just stuff I never really got around to, either due to school, or due to the laptop being in the shop, or just whatever the case. Um, we could be working on that in the next uh, coming weeks. So be sure to stay tuned for some of that upcoming content. 
yeah, let's move on to uh, some personal life stuff. As I said, I'm gonna be moving into a new private space. I'm gonna be moving at the end of May. I've been keeping an eye on this uh, guest house a couple towns over. Really like the vibe of the place. It's actually really close to the university I wanna go to after Lakeland, Temple University, Japan. So if I do get accepted out there, then, you know, the commute will be really fast. <laughs> But even if I don't get accepted out there, you know, just being able to stay in a, a private room for a couple months is fine. Yeah, I think it's going to be really nice to have my own private room once again so I can, you know, have my own little studio space and do it all up and all that fun stuff. So I can do these like, you know, video editing tutorials is the big one. Um, but also doing, you know, these little up-to-date videos so I'm not having to worry about, you know, weather conditions or people being around making a noise or whatever the case may be. You know, I can just sit down, record whenever. <laughs> and I can also do live streams from there as well so I don't have to worry about, you know, mobile signal or anything like that because I believe that guest house has Wi-Fi but I have to check. I'm primarily doing it just for my own mental health, basically. I really like having my own little private space and where I'm living now kind of sort of has that but because the space is so limited I'm basically sleeping on my bed and working on my bed and that's about all I have space for really so it's really hampering my creativity and just my ability to get shit done basically so I can't wait to move to the new space and it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, it's a it's a smaller guest house than the one I'm at now so there's less people there uh, so that's gonna be nice and I'm looking forward to uh, cooking at home once again because I'll be honest I've been spending like way too much eating out and that shit ain't healthy for you anyway if you guys are wondering about uh, what's going on with uh, Kelowna Chan World Tour we'll say pretty much what it is on the news just state of emergency King Kujitai but as you can see there's you know kids and shit running around so it's not very heavily enforced right now they're basically doing uh, some lockdowns with businesses and that's kind of how they're pursuing people to not you know stay outside you know the main differences that I've noticed is that you know past 8 p.m. you can't dine any in anywhere it's all takeout from there and some restaurants have switched to just entirely takeout. And it's also the case with some uh, convenies as well. Um, Lawson's won't let you do it anymore either. Pretty much the only place I got to go is uh, Family Mart. I know you guys are probably thinking, well, Andy Sand, why are you uh, dining out anyway? Shouldn't you be staying at home? You know, stay inside and be safe and stuff like that. And yeah, I definitely do agree with it, but you know, considering my living situation, I find it's actually a lot more dangerous for me to eat at home than it is to eat out because there's more people in the guest house, they're in a much denser environment, a lot more close. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say in this little update vid. And I'll be sure to keep you guys posted as uh, things change. And that said, this is Andy San, signing for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my May 2020 update video for, you guessed it, May 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And we out here. Good old Nakano, Tokyo, Japan, on top of my guest house here. So let's go over some YouTube -y stuff. Major thing that I want to announce is that I'm going to be putting out some new Andy Japandi content. Now, I have had some stuff that's been on the back burner for a while. I uh, just kind of put it off either due to finals or just whatever that I've been uh, secretly working on. So uh, be on the lookout for those coming out soon. It's gonna be some day in the life stuff and uh, some other little bits and bobbles here and there that I just never really got around to putting together. So uh, that's gonna be coming out soon. As well as some lost episodes. Um, there's a couple episodes that I recorded that I never really completed, but I definitely do wanna put them together and uh, get them out there. So one of them is going to be a day in the life episode where I showed you around Lakeland University of Japan back when the campus was actually open. And it was meant to be kind of like my first day at Lakeland, but I never got around to completely finishing the video. So I'm just going to kind of put it together as best I can and uh, 
and put it out there. And the next one I'm really excited about, it's going to be a long lost episode of the original Andy Japandi series. So I found some footage of me and my division out at a steak saloon out in Sasebo. And uh, I was going to do like a whole video on it, but I only recorded just a very brief clip of the steak saloon. And uh, if you're ever out in that way, I highly recommend it. Best steak you'll have. Chef's kiss. 10 out of 10. But I uh, can't wait to uh, show you guys that footage. It's going to be a real <laughs> trip down memory lane, let me tell you. I'm also gonna be working on some more uh, video editing tutorials. I'm also going to be starting up a podcast as well. It's gonna be called the Creator 101 Podcast. Uh, it's gonna be me interviewing fellow creators, talking about how, how they came up on the platform and various struggles that they went through. We'll also do some deep dives into their gear and their editing and workflow and this, that, and the other. And uh, can't wait to be putting it out there. And in addition to the interviews, I'm also going to be sharing my own experiences on the platform. So, you know, for what it's worth, I've been on YouTube for going on 15 years now. And while I'm not super duper successful with a lot of uh, subscribers and views and all this, that, and the other, you know, I've seen my fair share on the platform and uh, definitely want to share my experiences with you guys. And hopefully that'll help you along on your own journey, either on YouTube or elsewhere on other social media platforms. So, let's move on to the personal life section. This is something I'm very, very proud of. I've been staying here at this guest house out here in Nakano for about five going on six months now. And it's been a wonderful experience. I mean, it's like super close to Shinjuku. Like Shinjuku is literally, literally right behind me. You know, that's how freaking close I am. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience out here. And I couldn't have done it without this guest house. But uh, that being said, I am going to be moving. We're moving to a new guest house out in Kawasaki, Kanagawa, Japan. And uh, I've been looking for a place for a while now because um, I want to have a, a guest house that's close to my next school, Temple University, of Japan. Um, looking to find some place where the commute's very reasonable out there. And I also want to have my own room as well, just so I can uh, focus on my studies as well as uh, making content for you guys. Because I find that it's really hard for me to, uh, to focus on those things, whether I'm in the box or in the common areas or, you know, having to depend on weather conditions, doing stuff outside. Now, granted, it's nice right now, but uh, it's not always this nice out here in Japan. <laughs> So you have to kind of play with it a little bit, but my own private room, won't have to worry about it. And I'm also gonna have my own fridge as well. So I'm gonna be doing some batch cooking and it's gonna save me like so much money. And uh, also the kitchen is gonna be humongous. So uh, moving on to the next little bit, even though this is technically a little bit of YouTube news, but uh, we're gonna be shifting the uh, Breakfast in Tokyo series over to Breakfast in Japan. So that way it encompasses a more universal aspect as far as having breakfast out here in Japan <laughs> rather than just Tokyo. I also want to do some like live stream cooking as well because I never really got to do that in this guest house because it's the kitchen's like really tiny and there's always a whole bunch of people in there. It's just hard to, you know, get your stuff in. But uh, with this other kitchen, it's massive and there's just plenty of room for everybody. And uh, as far as the whole Temple University of Japan thing, um, at the time of this recording, I haven't been officially accepted into it yet, but I have applied, sent in transcripts, I'm in talks with the admissions counselor and uh, we're getting stuff set up from there. But yeah, just uh, make some headway on that and uh, getting ready to start up my last semester at Lakeland University of Japan uh, next week, in fact. Uh, it's going to be starting up school. Now we're going to be starting up school online and uh, with the intent of physically going back to the campus at some point, maybe, uh, we'll see. <laughs> That's the, uh, the current intention for the Dean as it stands right now. And uh, yeah, man. Things are, uh, things are looking up for you, boy, the Andy Sands Hamadesh stuff. So, that's pretty much all I want to say in this little uppy day video. And that's it, guys. This is the Andy San. 
I'm sorry for now. As always, forever. See you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my June 2020 update video for, you guessed it, June 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update day videos, we're gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as the YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is probably the one thing that you notice is that I finally got a tripod once again. So sadly, once I first came out to Japan, I had to throw out my old tripod due to weight restrictions when I rebooked my flight. So kind of was what it was, but uh, recently bought myself a new tripod and uh, it's been serving me well. And the thing I love about this tripod the most is that it's actually much taller than my old tripod. So my old tripod, I think at the absolute tallest, it could get maybe up to my chin. So it always looked, it always looked like I was kind of like looking down at the camera. And uh, with this, it's uh, about up to the top of my forehead. So I can, you know, tuck in that nice double chin. So I look much thinner than I actually am. <laughs> so that's nice. But uh, as far as YouTube stuff goes, uh, the main stuff I want to talk to you guys about is my Any Japan channel. The other stuff kind of is what it is. We'll deal with it when I get a little smack of time. But as far as the Any Japan channel goes, I put up a poll recently to see what types of videos you, got, you guys want to see in the future. And the thing is, I really love the community that we've been building on the Any Japan channel. And that's something I want to keep on doing with uh, more and more interaction with you guys, more polls to kind of see what types of that quality Japan content you wanna see from your boy, Dandy Sans Hamadeshta. So right now, time's recording. The uh, the front runner for the next episode in Japan you guys wanna see is the harsh realities of vlogging in Japan. So really getting a lot of good feedback with that one. So, you know, that might be the next episode of Andy Japandi that comes out unless another topic gets voted. But uh, yeah, definitely want to keep on doing more polls because I have a whole bunch of anti Japandi ideas and I just want to see like what you guys want to see next. As far as freelance video editing projects goes, I got picked up for a very big project for uh, editing as well as shooting. Um, it's one of the first times I've gone out there and just shot solo. And I'm really excited about this project, man. It's uh, Definitely my biggest project to date and really putting a lot of time and effort into this. And when it comes out, it's gonna be awesome. But uh, right now, can't get too into the weeds with it just cause it's very the beginning stages. And I want you guys to see it once it's done. But once it's done, you're gonna love it. It's definitely testing me to do a lot of new things with editing. And that's always the, the fun about uh, doing these freelance projects is upping your game and learning new techniques and just like making the videos just that one little bit better. And this project is definitely doing that. And plus I really love the people I'm working with and I want to do right by them. Let's move on to some personal life news. So as you guys know, I moved into this lovely guest house out here in Kawasaki, Kanagawa, Japan. I moved in here about three weeks ago, time's recording. And gotta say, really love this place. And I highly underestimated my need for my own personal workspace, living space, all that stuff. Um, it's really done wonders for my mental health. And also being in a less busy part of Japan definitely helps as well. I can't say enough good things about this place, man. Like the people here are really nice. I don't see them all that often just because a lot of them are really busy with either work or a lot of them are engineering students as well. So they go to a lot of engineering schools out here in Kawasaki. Uh, so I don't see them all that often, but when I do, they're very nice. Uh, for future Andy Japanese videos, I definitely do want to uh, do a little guest house tour like I did when I was living back in the box in Nakano. Um, I also want to do a little tour of the local area around here as well, because it's really nice really picturesque. It's not, you know, what you would consider like iconic Tokyo or anything like that because, well, it's not Tokyo. <laughs> but it's still really nice, really tranquil. And especially with the hydrangeas, the Ajisai, Japanese say, especially with them out here in, uh, in bloom, I definitely want to get that before rainy season wraps up here. So that's another idea for a future Andy Japandi video as well because uh, I got my eye on some places where the old hydrangea are very plentiful, so um, be on the lookout for that 
coming soon as well as uh, the other stuff. <laughs> uh, but if you uh, can't wait until then to uh, get your hydrangea fix, go to instagram.com slash I've been posting a ton of pictures of the blooming hydrangea out here in the local area, out here in Kawasaki. I mean, rainy season, kind of blah, but uh, one of the things that definitely makes it nice is the, uh, the Ajisai in bloom. And there's plenty of them around here, let me tell you. Now, as far as school goes, um, this semester is a lot less stressful than the previous one. There is uh, a lot less projects to do. There's still some projects coming on the horizon though uh, that I gotta take some time out for, but uh, the pace and everything is a lot less demanding this time around. And as far as actually physically going back to class, um, I don't really see that happening until maybe the fall at the earliest, but uh, I'll be all graduated from Lakeland by then. I'm really looking forward to finishing the semester strong, getting my associate's degree, and then transferring over to uh, hopefully, fingers crossed anyway, uh, Temple University of Japan, which uh, this guest house is a lot closer to uh, than the one in Nakano was when I was living in the box. And uh, that's one of the main reasons why I moved out here, in addition to all this space. <laughs> so hopefully when uh, campus does reopen, I'm fairly close by. I don't have to go through Shinjuku anymore for that nightmarish morning commute. And uh, things are gonna be carrying on smoothly. And plus, since I have my own space, I know I talk about it a lot, but I uh, gotta emphasize just how much I love this space. But since I have it, um, I'm able to work on projects more intensely and I won't have to worry about like renting out hotel rooms for the weekend to work on the major projects. Um, I can sit here, focus, and uh, just do my thing, man. Once this semester wraps up, my plans are to transfer out to Temple University of Japan to continue my education, get my four-year degree with uh, all the credits I got from Lakeland as well as my other universities, just all the storage of uh, transfer credits should be able to get my degree in about a year's time overall. And uh, we look forward to that. And then once I get my degree, get a work visa and stay out here as long as I like. So um, if for some reason Temple doesn't give me the okay, my plan B would be to go back to America to transfer over to the main campus of Lakeland University out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Because one of the cool things about Lakeland is if you get your associates from the Japan campus, then you can transfer over to the Lakeland University campus out in Wisconsin. All your credits transfer over one-to-one. -one. There's no worrying about, well, will they take this credit? I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know. None of that worrying, you know? Uh, as far as other transfer credits, uh, your miles may vary, but as far as the ones earned at Lakeland University of Japan, good to go. And also, you get a really generous grant for transferring over. Uh, it all depends on your GPA. I know originally I said, it was $10,000, but actually, after doing some research, the $10,000 is on the low end of things. So that's only if you get like a 2.0 to like a 2.5 or something like that. So if you get like the absolute like bare minimum GPA, then you get the 10K. Hey, yeah, that right. But you can max it out up to 16K if you get, I believe, like a 3.5 to a 4.0. So it's tiered based on your overall GPA. So right now, my GPA being where it's at, I could get 14K, but uh, I'm looking to transfer over to the main campus, should Temple not accept me. Definitely wanna bump that up to a 16, you know, get them good grades and all that. So that's definitely something to look out for if you're wanting to come out here to Japan once uh, old Clone Chain World Tour wraps up, obviously. Um, that's definitely a really good incentive to, you know, get your feet wet as far as Japan goes. You know, if you like it, awesome. If you don't, you can always come back to uh, Mercantin Land, finish up, get a really generous scholarship, and uh, go from there, man. So, but yeah, I think that's uh, gonna do it for this uh, little up to date video. So, that's it, guys. This is the Andy San. Sign for now, as always, and forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my July 2020 update video for, you guessed it, July 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as the YouTube stuff. So, <sighs> breathe in that good us prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. The first thing 
that I want to talk about is obviously YouTube stuff, right? So as far as my channels goes, um, this channel is pretty much dedicated to like personal life updates as well as miscellaneous stuff. So um, my main goal with it is to just upload a video once a month, just to let y'all know how I'm doing. If there's any overall updates to things, stuff like that. So as far as that goes, I'm doing pretty good. And as far as my second channel goes, edited by the Andy San, it's my video editing tutorial channel. That channel is doing really well. It's getting that consistent traffic, doing good things. And even though I haven't really updated it in a couple weeks now, um, but I do plan on maybe throwing in a couple new tutorials, see how they do, and going from there. Then my third channel is the one I'm spending the most time on, and that's my Andy Japandi channel. And I'm only really able to put in like one video a week just due to schedule and everything like that. But uh, you guys are really showing up in the comments, really giving the videos I put out there a lot of love, and I really appreciate it. But right now with that channel, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm not really burnt out per se, but I'm just kind of in that like pre-burnout phase where the ideas aren't really coming as easily as they used to, or even really more importantly, the enthusiasm for those ideas isn't really there as much as it used to be. Um, I don't know if it's just me looking a little too into like analytics and kind of seeing where other people are as far as their YouTube journey in the same niche and everything. I've just been following a lot of uh, bigger YouTubers and kind of seeing how they do things and seeing if there's any ways that I can improve my own channels and content and stuff like that. And you start getting into this headspace of, you know, imposter syndrome and just, you know, my content's not really good enough and am I boring, am I old? Is this format in general just kind of stale? Like, this is all they want to see is just fucking, you know, capsule hotel videos and kooky cafes and ooh, wacky Japan and all the other shit that gets the clicks. And, you know, you start to get really cynical about making videos on YouTube in general. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, end up leaving YouTube because of, of something like that. So I realized, you know, I got to trust in the creative process and know that this is just part of the process, you know, the, the dip. As Seth Godin likes to put it. So, so I did put up a couple ideas I did have for future Andy Japandi videos. And uh, as the time of this recording, the one that's leading the charge is how I fell in love with Japan. So I'm gonna keep that poll up for a couple more days, kind of see where things are and see if maybe one of the other options, you know, breaks free of it or whatever. And uh, we'll just go from there. So be on the lookout for whatever video wins soon but uh, as far as like live streams and stuff like that for the channel again due to uh, schedule and everything I've had to basically put the, the, the live streams on hiatus and also I, I think they've kind of run their course for the time being as far as things goes um, I just feel like you know I've kind of done enough breakfasts in Japan to where people are like okay I get it you know next <laughs> you know so it, it is nice to like connect with my audience and stuff like that, and that's cool. But at the same time, I want to give them something of value other than just, you know, talk with me as I'm stuffing my face full of the, the same shit. You know, there's only so many times you can see me eat tuna mayo onigiri and drink the same black coffee and all this other stuff before it's like, all right, I get it. You know, <laughs> so I think I'm just going to put those on pause for a little bit while I think of something new, uh, just kind of a new way to kind of judge things up a little bit as far as that goes um, and I might even be doing that with the in Japan channel in general because you know, I really do like making content uh, especially Japan themed content but right now I'm just kind of uh, not really burnt out but like I said just kind of at that pre burnout phase so I just want to maybe take it a little easy on that channel for a while and maybe focus on something else that usually helps me with with my creativity usually I find um, either just taking a break entirely and waiting for uh, the creative juices to start flowing again usually helps, or just focusing my creative energy on something completely different. They usually give me ideas for like the other stuff that I was having problems with. So I did this originally when I started my Instagram account uh, back in what, 2012 or something like that? So I did that originally as just kind of a thing to focus on when I wasn't making videos. And it also gave me just some creative ideas and just kind of kept the momentum going for things so I could make my videos better. So 
one of the things I was thinking of is uh, something actually I've been thinking of for a while now, and that is uh, doing podcasts. So I have an idea for a podcast called the Creator 101 Podcast, where I go one-on-one -on -one with creators like you. And uh, the idea for it is to be themed around content creators. So whether it's uh, doing interviews with content creators, which is the original idea, but I figure to help build up the series, it might be best for me to just kind of go in depth with a lot of topics that are relevant to content creators on YouTube, Twitch, wherever the case. Uh, YouTube obviously is my wheelhouse. So that's the area that I can speak the most confidently from. Uh, but I do want to get other creators from other platforms onto uh, my podcast as well, just to kind of you know learn from them, if anything, and uh, stuff like that. So that might be something that I focus my uh, creative energies on for the time being. But uh, <laughs> this is kind of a terrible segue. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about as far as YouTube stuff goes, and I'll make a dedicated video on it so you guys can learn more. But I have officially launched my own merch line for the Angie Pandy channel. So um, I'll leave a link down below in the description, maybe pin it in the comments um, so you guys can check that out. Right now I have just a t-shirt, hoodie, and a mug up there right now, the Angie Pandy logo. Um, as time moves on, I'll be putting up more designs, more uh, things that you can buy, I guess. It just This is just kind of a trial run just to kind of see how things go and mostly just for me to learn how to market stuff like this because like I always wanted to do like merchandising in, in some uh, aspect, but I never really understood the platform, really knew how to like market myself, you know? Like it always feels weird, because I guess, you know, I've been on YouTube for a long ass time, you know, since 2006. So, you know, I still kind of have a little bit of that old school YouTuber vibe where I'm like, you know, just do it because you love it, don't sell out and all this other shit. But at the same time, like I'm 34 years old and your boy need them months. You know, I'm not living at mommy and daddy's place anymore and don't have to worry about money. Like, <laughs> I kind of need shit. And plus, you know, my audience has been kind of asking for it as well. You know, just little messages here and there and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know what? I'll just put it up, see what happens. I kind of want to learn more about marketing that anyway. So why not, right? And uh, also, I revamped my Patreon, patreon.com slash the So... If you go there, there's different uh, reward tiers as well. Uh, I do plan on for the either top four or five tiers. Uh, they're, I call them secret tiers, <laughs> basically. Um, so for those tiers, I do plan on adding more stuff to those to kind of zhuzh them up a little bit. Uh, but for now, it's just kind of is what it is. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to uh, be redesigning my Patreon. Because again, just like with merchandising, I always felt kind of weird about like, you know, charging fans for money or whatever, but you know, it is kind of something that a lot of other creators have had good success with. And I want to learn more about it and to actually offer you guys some value rather than me just taking money just cause, you know? <laughs> so I want it to be a uh, very reciprocative, reciprocative relationship as far as Patreon goes. So I want to give you guys much value as you're giving me so definitely want to build that up as well but that's enough rambling about the uh the youtube -y stuff so let's move on to some personal life stuff right so main thing going on right now uh personal life wise is school so i just passed through midterms um did pretty well on a couple midterms and then got my head handed to me on a couple others uh, one of them was mostly just due to time constraints. Uh, I spent like way too much time on like one section of the midterm and didn't have enough time for the other. And the other section counted more than the first section I was working on. So it was just an issue of time management for me in that in that case. Um, but uh, I can definitely come back from it. You know, just kind of looking at the, uh, the grade breakdown of uh, the different assignments and stuff like that. So it's just a temporary setback, but as long as I uh, do well on the other stuff moving forward, it should be fine. And then for the other midterm, I was completely destroyed by it. Like, um, I just didn't expect 
so many problems that I wasn't good at to be on the midterm and was just completely blindsided by it, which you know, is my fault, kind of is what it is. But I did talk to my professor about it. And just like with the other midterm, as long as I keep on keeping on, you know, doing the homework, doing good on the tests, all that typical, you know, class stuff, then uh, things will be good. So just gotta keep pressing on and uh, do better moving forward. And so moving on to basically like the big problem in my life as of late has been, um, where am I going next? So um, as you guys know, this is my last semester at Lakeland University of Japan under the associate's degree program. Uh, so I've just been looking around for uh, the next step in, uh, in my education. And originally I thought it was gonna be Temple University of Japan. I applied to them, was uh, talking with the, um, the admissions counselor about things, was you know keeping him apprised of, of everything that was going on. He said things were going pretty good. Then once I turned in all my transcripts, um, I got the uh, notice that I was rejected from from Temple due to low grades from when I was originally in college back you know in the Western KBCC days. And because of the low grades from those colleges, even though I did really well following that, uh, I guess like the averages don't average up or something. So he said it was uh, below standards. So kind of was what it was and. You know, I decided to to fight that because it's like, yeah, I kind of did shitty when I started out going back to school, you know, but, uh, you know, I got my shit together, took a break, figured myself out and uh, been maintaining above a 3.0 ever since. So I just kind of wanted to let him know, like, you know, hey, I've been doing really good these past three going on four semesters straight. So, like, what do you want from me? <laughs> but uh, apparently they're very strict about overall grade requirements and stuff like that. So, you know, I went all the way up to the uh, the Dean of Admissions, um, oddly enough. And uh, yeah, he hit me with a pretty hard no. So uh, I was really, really broken up about it because I feel, feel like, you know, I've really worked hard to get myself out to Japan and to stay out here in Japan. And just to have the rug pulled out from underneath me really wrecked my confidence. And obviously with what's going on in the world with uh, Kelowna Chan World Tour, um, it's not really giving me a whole lot of opportunities to go out and socialize or anything like that to kind of blow off some steam or whatever. So it just feels like I'm stuck in my room most of the time, you know? So that doesn't help either. But uh, <clears throat> one of the good things about, uh, about what's, what, with, uh, what's going on is, is uh, Lakeland. So, um, originally I was going to go to their home campus out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, because they have like a home transfer program that you basically do two years out here at Lakeland University of Japan. Then you go to the home campus for the last two years to get your bachelor's. And, uh, you know, that's one of the, the options available. And that's something I've been really looking at, but also recently, um, Lakeland has been looking to start up a four-year program at the Japan campus. Now, right now, the time is recording. It's in the final stages of getting approved. So they just have to do a lot of stuff on the, uh, the back end as far as the local government and stuff like that. That's kind of where it's at right now. But uh, once it's approved through them, then they'll be able to offer the four-year program. And I'm really excited about it. And once it's officially approved, I'll probably make a dedicated video on it on my Andy Japandi channel, kind of breaking down what the four-year program is, what's all offered and all that fun stuff. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully coming soon. So that's basically where I'm at. You know, I just, you know, I'm hoping that the program gets approved before I graduate next month in August. Um, and I'm just, you know, really in like a limbo type spot where just, I don't know, man, like I want to do a lot of good things, but I'm just kind of in this weird holding pattern, you know, like I want to stay out here in Japan as best as I can, but, uh, 
if school's not an option for me, you know, then what am I gonna do, right? You know, obviously, if I get an associate's, you know, technically I can stay here in Japan, but the amount of jobs that offer working visas for an associate's degree, pretty minimal. And even then, I've heard some horror stories about them, so it's like, you know. <laughs> so, it's kind of difficult. So I definitely want to get that bachelor's degree so you know, I can be more flexible with my uh, job opportunities. And also just for a sense of accomplishment because you, you know, I've been after this bachelor's degree for a long ass time now. And at this point in my life, man, I just want to get the shit over with. You know, I'm just tired of you know, going after it. I just want to get it done, get it, and then just carry on with the, uh, the next piece of business in my life. So that's kind of where things are at right now. Sorry to end it on a, on a bummer note, but uh, there's also a lot of good things to look forward to in the future as well. So hopefully if uh, Lickley University of Japan approves the program before I graduate, then I'll be staying here. I'll be making a fun video like, yeah, everything's good. But uh, for now, it's just kind of meh. So anyway, I think one of the things here, <laughs> I've been rambling and raving long enough. So well, that's it, guys. This is the Andy Sound. Sign for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my July 2020 update video, part two. So yeah, as we always do with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is, well, YouTube stuff. So, as you guys may know, I've kind of been a little inactive on some channels and a little more active on others. And the reason behind this is mostly due to uh, some creative burnout on certain channels, as well as a ramping up of my school schedule. So, this time we're getting closer and closer to finals. Uh, time's recording about three weeks away from finals for the semester. So, I've been focusing more of my efforts on uh, getting final final projects done as well as studying for well finals so let's go over things channel by channel so uh, as far as uh, this channel the andy san um, i think it's going pretty well you know i've met my goal for uh, having at least one video a month on this channel it's basically just serving as like an archive and just kind of a a snapshot into my life at least one video a month i uh, just kind of let you know like where i'm at in life as well as to give you updates on uh, other channels and stuff like that as well as far as my edit by the andy san channel um as always i do have uh, some tutorials and stuff of course topics and things like that goes i have them kind of prepped up but again due to the ramping up of the school schedule and other commitments it's kind of hard to to fit those in but uh it's kind of a when it comes sort of thing anyway and plus I do have some uh, some other plans for that channel as well because I think that um, and this kind of goes more into the uh, creative burnout that I've overall been feeling with uh, certain types of content that I've been putting out that we're gonna be getting into here a little bit. Um, but I feel like with the Edit by the Indesign channel, like it's, uh, it's definitely been a good thing. You know, a lot of my tutorials have really hit it off with the algorithm. You guys seem to like them. And uh, you know, they're earning me the lion's share of my income on YouTube. So for me, it's like, why we're doing a good thing, right? You know, if, if, I'm, if I'm a radio station, you know, gotta play the hits, right? <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I feel like they're kind of running their course as far as that just being the only thing on the channel. So I do want to experiment with other types of content that are still relative to video editing and content creation in general. So it's not gonna go totally off the, uh, off the deep end but uh, I do want to offer some different types of videos as well. So I was thinking maybe going a bit more in depth with uh, the creative process, you know, going and talking about different aspects of it, maybe talking about uh, what cameras you should get, you know, things like that. But I also still want to do tutorials, but I figure having more of a variety of content that's still within the same niche of, you know, video making would uh, benefit that channel the most. So. Be on the lookout for that whenever. <laughs> whenever the semester is over, probably. So as far as my main channel that I'm focusing on right now, I hate to call it my main channel, even though this is technically my main channel, but 
You guys know what I mean. Uh, the channel I'm putting the most effort into, the Andy Japani channel. Um, as you guys know, I really haven't been making a whole lot of stuff for that channel as of late. I've still been trying to, to put out stuff at least once a week, but I don't know, man, just creatively, I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. And plus with a lot of stuff going on in my personal life that we're gonna get into here in a bit, um, it's just, I don't know, it's just not the same. You know, it's just, you know, we've kind of hit a wall, creatively speaking, as far as that goes. But um, I do have a poll up on that channel to determine what the next Andy Japani video will be about. Uh, originally, I put up a poll last week to uh, determine the next topic, but it ended up in a tie. So I decided to repost the poll with just the, uh, the two options that tied. So I'm gonna wait a little bit and determine clear cut winner and uh, we'll make that the next topic. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just been really hard to, uh, to think of some, some new ideas and stuff like that. So it's really good to, to get you guys' uh, take on what you wanna see from your boy, the Andy Sand Sam Adesha here. So just leaving it up to you guys for the time being. And uh, hopefully be able to get back into the swing of things as far as making that quality Japan content very soon as uh, things unfold. So now let's talk about some positive news as far as YouTube things go before we move on to the personal life section. Uh, my newest channel, the Creator 101 podcast, where I go 101 with creators like you. I've really been wanting to do a podcast for the longest time and I finally decided to take the plunge and uh, do it. So I've created a channel called the Creator 101 podcast where it's designed to not only talk about creator issues, but also to interview fellow creators and to get some idea behind their, uh, their process, creative process, as well as give them more of like an origin story, like how did they come across on the platform? What was their like breakthrough moment? Uh, if they have any advice to give to up and coming YouTubers or YouTubers struggling with certain aspects of the creative process. Um, I also want to get people from other creative platforms as well. So I don't want to just limit it to YouTube. I also want to get people who are, you know, on like uh, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, stuff like that. But uh, obviously, since my wheelhouse is YouTube, that's going to be the, uh, the main source of, uh, of creators is on there. But I do want to have creators from other platforms to kind of give a broader perspective on uh, just making that quality content, no matter where you're at. So be on the lookout for more episodes of that soon. In the meantime, uh, I plan on making little clips of the main podcast episodes um, and then just putting them on the same channel. And you know, if it gets big enough or something like that, it might spin it off to its own clips channel. But for now, just best to keep it all in uh, one little section. So really proud of how the first episode turned out where it was just uh, an interview with myself. <laughs> so it's kind of a little, little self-indulgent, but uh, I figure since the podcast is just starting, uh, I gotta go with a guest that I know will have no trouble getting on, me. So there you go. Hope you guys uh, tune in the episode and uh, let me know what y'all think. So. Now that we've gone over the uh, the YouTube stuff, let's go over some personal life stuff. Now, this is the thing I've been struggling with a lot for the past few weeks, and it's just been it's just been a real nightmare, man. Not gonna lie, you know, like uh, with the whole uh, London Chan World Tour situation going on in Japan, putting out a travel ban. Uh, it's just been very very difficult determining uh, where I'm gonna go next after I graduate from, uh, from Lakeland University of Japan, where I'm going to school at now. So I've just been um, just busy talking with uh, so many um, staff members out of Lakeland, talking with some other people as well to kind of figure out like, what's the next move, right? Because, you know, for me, I want to stay in Japan. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, kind of a weird thing, you know, because there there is a, uh, a program that's going to be coming up with Lakeland to allow me to stay. It's uh, They're starting up a new four-year program. It hasn't been officially released yet, although there is some uh, little blurbs about it on the website, so I feel like I can talk about it at least. Um, but there is going to be a four-year program offered at Lakeland, 
And the plan is to transition over to that program once I graduate from the, uh, the two-year associate's program and uh, just continue my education from there. But uh, we don't know if everything's gonna get approved in time. So I'm just really worried that I'll have to uh, leave the country. And if that's the case, um, my chances of going back to Japan are really, really slim because um, with America, even if I would be there for just a few months uh, to cover a semester or whatever, um, there's a lot of expenses involved with, with living in America, even just temporarily. Because with apartments, the, the shortest lease I could find out there would be like six months. And of those apartments, they're usually really expensive. And plus I gotta think about getting a car, <laughs> worry about getting uh, some furniture, at least a bed, and um, just all this stuff. Not to mention the plane ticket home, you know, <laughs> to my new home. That's gonna be, you know, upwards of a thousand dollars. So we're looking at like 1,200, 1,400 them burger bucks. And that's like almost all my savings just right there, just getting home. And you know, all the deposit and all this, that and the other, it's like all this money that I saved up is uh, gonna be burnt through pretty quickly, just getting myself back to America. So um, ideally I would like to stay here in Japan and uh, continue on through uh, Lakeland's new program. But uh, the way things are going, it's uh, it's very touch and go right now. So at the time it's recording, uh, Lakeland's already submitted all their paperwork. So it's nothing nothing on Lakeland's end that is uh, holding up the process. It's just on the, uh, the administrative side in, uh, in Japan. So like uh, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Justice. So uh, basically they're going through those channels. They're waiting for, um, in this case, the Ministry of Education to approve Lakeland as a school that offers four-year degrees instead of just the two-year degrees and then uh, the Ministry of Justice to be able to issue visas for uh, those appropriate time periods. So right now I'm just uh, just in limbo, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's a really shitty situation to be in, not gonna lie, and I've just been really really stressed out over it. It's uh, it's really, really affected my mental health and just trying to figure out like what's what's the next plan, you know, whether I have to go back to America, go to school for, uh, for a semester, and then come back, come back in the spring if I even can, because I don't know if the, the Japan travel bans from America will be lifted by then. Uh, see, that's, that's another thing, like um, everything could be done right on the Lakeland side of things and on my side of things, but if I go back to America, it's you know, pretty much going to be game over for me. You know, there's going to be no chance of me being able to come back for uh, the foreseeable future. Uh, so it's uh, it's been really stressful, I'm not going to lie. And that's uh, one of the main reasons why it's been hard to make anti Japandi content, because it's like, you know, you don't really know what the future is going to be. You know, I don't know what the future is going to be for me. Uh, in this country moving forward so do i really want to you know make more content about japan knowing that i might be gone in like two to three weeks build up a channel and build up you guys' expectations for that channel you know it's obviously you know it'd be nice to like make some memories and stuff you know for me to look back on and everything but uh you know a lot of ways it's it's really sad it's you know it's like uh letting someone go in some ways but there's still always that hope of you know maybe it'll all get approved I mean heck it, the whole thing could get approved today and this whole video would uh, <laughs> be completely obsolete and I'll make a video saying hey you know everything's all good but right now as I'm recording this time's recording um, we just don't know nobody really has any of the answers right now but uh, if uh, the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Education approve of Lakeland's new program uh, before I graduate in uh, mid-August, so they still have about two to three weeks left to approve of it, then everything will be totally good. You know, I'll get um, my visa modified and be able to still stay at this guest house and uh, carry on with, smartly with my life because you know, with here, like, I'm already set, you know, as far as living arrangements and all this other stuff, which was the main 
expense when I first got to Japan because you know it was a plane ticket coming over here. But mostly it was just uh, living expenses until the GI Bill kicked in, and there was a lot of you know living arrangements that I knew I wasn't going to be there for very long, so I didn't invest in a lot of longer term stuff like a bicycle or like a slow cooker or any other bigger appliances and things like that to really make myself feel at home. I always felt like, you know, any minute I could get snatched up and uh, have to go back to America for whatever reason. So I always felt like I was just temporarily living here, which I know, like, if you look at it long term, yeah, you know, I'm only here on a student visa, I get it. But, uh, you know, I came back to Japan to, uh, to stay in Japan. So whether going through like a student program and then eventually transitioning over to getting a work visa, you know, my mind's pretty well made up that I want to stay here long term. Unless, um, like I said before in other videos, like the only reasons I would even consider moving back to America is, well, for one, I didn't predict this particular <laughs> Kelowna Chan World Tour situation. To affect things so um, one would be if i was forced to because of visa issues uh, another would be if i was like completely broke and uh had to go back uh, another one would be if uh, a close family member was uh on their deathbed basically so and even in that case like i would only be there until uh things resolve themselves and then i would move back to japan and then four would be uh, if I got like a really good job offer back in the States that I just could not refuse, um, either like LA or New York or something like that. Um, so if I got something like that, you know, I would consider moving back to America. But uh, otherwise, like I'm pretty comfortable out here. I'm already pretty well settled in this guest house. And, you know, once we get things moving, we can, you know, move to uh, the next phase, which would be getting myself an apartment. But Right now, I just don't feel uh, comfortable getting myself an apartment. I mean, even if Lakeland does get approved for the four-year program, I don't really feel comfortable getting myself an apartment until at least I have a work visa. So that way, you know, I can really put some money behind it and don't have to worry about uh, these sorts of issues. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I'm just a, a ball of nerves, basically, just waiting for a uh, for response and hopefully hopefully Lakeland does get approved for uh, that four-year program so that way I can continue to stay here and uh, go to school you know get the four-year degree and uh, then get a work visa to, uh, to stay out here but uh, for now I'm just kind of in this strange limbo and it's very anxiety inducing very depressing stuff like that so I hate to end things on a, on a down note but uh, it just kind of is what it is right now. So anyway, with all that said, I uh, just want to thank you guys for all the support you've given me in the comments, on uh, the Discord, and uh, elsewhere on the, uh, the internets. So with all that said, guys, this is the Andy-san. So for now, as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome you once again to my August 2020 update video for you guessed it, August 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always, with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff, as well as YouTube stuff. So, <sighs> breathe in that good ass prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is youtube -y stuff. So, I know I've been a little off platform as far as talking about life and things, I and mean, we'll be getting into that. But I am proud of the um, feedback that I got from my video essay that I did for my film class this past semester. Been receiving a lot of good uh, complimentary um, comments, messages, things like that. Uh, really appreciate it. There have been some people that you know suggest that maybe I should change the direction of this channel and do more of that video essay type content in the future. But right now, I like to keep this channel as more of my personal slash miscellaneous type channel. So uh, the idea is to give you monthly updates as well as just for videos that I shoot that don't really fall into the other category of my other channels. But that being said, I have been considering doing a type of video essay channel 
essentially. Just having it be its own dedicated space. And I, I was thinking about doing this more in terms of like anime, but with the positive response from my movie essay, um, I might be broadening the topic a little bit to just do video essays in general of stuff that I find interesting rather than just sticking with, oh, it's the guy that does the anime essays versus, oh, it's the guy that does the film essays. Why not just do video essays, right? I know it's probably gonna kill that old search engine optimization, which loves to uh, niche everybody down, but bug it. <laughs> so that is something I am considering. Uh, I haven't really thought of the, the brand for it yet. That's kind of my main sort of qualifier when I'm thinking about starting up a new channel. I've gotta have a name for it, something hooky, something that's easy to remember, and it just automatically is something I'd make, basically. So once I get that all settled, then uh, we'll be moving forward with it soon. Um, I'm not really planning as far as like a schedule for that sort of thing, cause well, you know my content, right? <laughs> Kinda is what it is. But uh, definitely want to be making more of those video essays. I really did enjoy making that one actually, even though it was on a bit of a time crunch and I pulled an all nighter for it. But the end result, definitely speaks for itself, I'd say. So in addition to that, um, as far as the other channels goes, I know my Creator 101 podcast, which is my, you know, at times recording my newest channel. I know I haven't really made any new episodes of it lately. Uh, that's mostly just due to um, the semester wrapping up as well as work ramping up, which we'll get into in the personal life section later. But anyway, I am looking into um, interviewing some of my creator friends. I have a couple in mind that I want to uh, pick the brains, learn a little something, something from. Uh, but it's just a matter of timing, basically. You know, I got to line my schedule up with theirs and uh, pick a good day to uh, get out there and uh, get that interview in. So um, I do have plans for that channel. It's not abandoned or anything. It's just, you know, more is coming soon, basically. Now, as for my um, video editing channel, edited by the Andy Son, I do have a couple new ideas for it. I always have like a little sketch pad, I guess, of different ideas for uh, video tutorials that I have stored away in like a folder on my computer. And uh, whenever I'm feeling a little frisky and want to make a tutorial, I just go through that whole list, pluck one out, oh, here we go, and uh, blammo. So yeah, kind of is what it is for that channel. And as for my Andy Japandi channel, um, that's a pretty interesting tale, if I do say so myself. Um, thing is with it is, um, you know, I've really been enjoying doing the Mr. Peachy type content, the Board in Japan series. Uh, it's just something I kind of did as a bit of like counterculture to stuff like with uh, Mr. Yabaton and, and things like that. And also just kind of a way for me to vet my frustrations with the, uh, you know, vlogger community, not just the J vloggers, but vlogging in general, where everybody has to be all nice and upbeat and happy and hey guys, you know, put on the YouTube face and all that shit. You know, to me, Mr. Peachy is complete like antithesis to that sort of wacky type, uh, you know, hypro video culture, I guess. And uh, it's just been so easy to make those videos. Cause like, I'm basically, it's kind of just an experimental thing for me, <laughs> essentially. It allows me to just really have freedom with uh, the type of stuff that I make. And I know it's not everybody's cup of peach tea, as it were, but uh, the far majority of you guys have really been loving the creativity and the editing and the pacing and all that from those videos. So definitely thinking about doing more. Um, I'm not gonna turn the Andy Japani channel into the Mr. Peach channel, so <laughs> we are gonna be probably pumping the brakes on him for a little bit after I get this next video out. And then maybe just like an every once in a while sort of thing, just put out a new episode of uh, Board Japan with uh, Mr. Peachy. But I gotta get back to my bread and butter as far as Andy Japan goes and making some of that quality Japan content. And I have a couple episodes 
ready and waiting to be edited. So I just filmed one today, actually. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's gonna be a very interesting video. It's definitely gonna help a lot of people out, especially if you have a little bit of coin. You know what I'm saying, hint, hint. So anyway, that's about all I wanna say for the youtube -y stuff. So let's get on with the real star of the show, right? The personal life section. I haven't really been saying a whole heck of a lot about my situation on social media. Definitely really haven't been talking about it on YouTube until now. Um, but I do have some good news and bad news as far as my stay here in Japan goes. Now we'll start off with the bad news. So this past semester, uh, let's go over some grades. Um, I got an A, I got a C, I got a C minus. And, brace yourselves, I got an F. So, bad news is, I failed a class that was required to, uh, to graduate this semester at Lakeland. And I was pretty bummed about it. Uh, it was math, for those wondering. Um, historically, not uh, really good at math. So it really comes as no surprise, but uh, basically, after midterms, I really lost track, especially with that class. Um, it was really hard for me to, to bounce back with it. Um, and I even like looked up stuff online and like how to do the kind of stuff we were doing. And it made me even more confused. And, you know, when I talked to my professor about it, um, just his approach wasn't quite enough for me to really um, learn what I needed to learn as far as, you know, the process of solving the problems, not just to solve like a specific problem, you know, if, the, if that makes any sense. So because of this failing and because um, I got two C's, one of them C minus, and it wasn't really enough to help kind of pull things up, um, my GPA this semester has dipped below standards, but because I did so good the previous semester, um, my overall cumulative GPA is still in good standing. So I talked with uh, some people over at Lakeland and fortunately was able to straighten some things out. And now we'll move on to the good news, right? So the good news is I'll be able to retake the math class and three other classes that are needed for my prospective major in business administration once uh, Lakeland kind of gets the ball rolling on that, um, which hopefully will be at the end of the year, or by the end of the year, I should say. So the, gr the good news, the great news, I should say, is that your boy's able to stay in Japan, at least until the end of the year. And uh, once we get to that point, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. But 2020, despite all else that's going on in the world right now, is looking to be a pretty good year for your boy, the Andy Sands Hamadeshta. And uh, so excited to be able to spend the rest of the year, at least, here in Japan. Um, just um, so, so grateful, so thankful for everything. I've also gotten some really good freelancing opportunities as well. So I was able to work with a local children's author to help design an e-learning course. Um, managed to complete that before the end of the semester, in fact, so it was all launched and ready to go. And uh, got the, uh, the most amount of money I've ever gotten from a single gig before, which is really, really nice and definitely helped me out, especially during these months when uh, the GI Bill isn't paying me because I'm not in school, I'm on break, uh, at least until next month. So just a short little summer break, but that's fine by me. But in any event, uh, because of that, it led to another gig working for a local school out here, being their videographer and uh, showing the parents what the kids are doing, what they're learning all day, stuff like that. So really happy to uh, be a part of that team and to help them out and to really um, work with, uh, with kids. Um, it's not something I'm really, really used to, to be honest with you. Um, Cause I'm used to like, whenever I'm out there filming stuff, you know, I'm usually filming like 
stationary objects. So I'm usually like planning my shots and being very meticulous and like getting the camera and just kind of slowly kind of gliding over it or doing like the little rotating sort of thing to get that cool like 3D sort of, sort of look there. Uh, but with kids, it's like herding cats basically. <laughs> so there's absolutely no way in hell I'm gonna get a kid to like, hey, Shotokun, stay there while I do some video and stuff. It's like, psh, that kid's like all the way on the other <laughs> end of the classroom running around and do all kinds of crazy kooky stuff. So it has really helped improve my uh, my shooting, which is something I haven't really been doing a whole, he a whole heck of a lot of. Um, mostly just behind the desk um, editing stuff. But uh, yeah, actually being out in the field and especially with very um, active guests that I'm shooting, um, it's really helping me to uh, learn a different style of not only video editing, but also shooting as well. So it's less meticulous and planned out and more just kind of spontaneous in the moment. I'm um, looking at a lot of like old school children's shows kind of get some inspiration as far as like different camera works and things like that. And I watched an old episode of Zubamofu. Zubamofu. Zabamofu. I think that's how it's pronounced. And uh, it had a lot of quick cuts and movements and really fast movements and things like that. Keep the kids interested. So, you know, I don't feel quite as bad for having some fast camera movements to kind of, you know, help capture everything. And, uh, you know, keep it in a nice short two to five minute package, you know, slap some music on there, call it a day. So really feeling excited about it. I'm um, learning a whole heck of a lot. And plus, you know, even though I don't really think I'm like a, a kid's person, you know, I was, you know, <laughs> you know me, I'm kind of, kind of standoffish for, for stuff like that, but you can't help but uh, feel really happy around them. You know, they're just super, active and very optimistic and it's just like I could be in like the worst mood but uh, once I get in there and you know start shooting the kids with my camera obviously um, uh, I just can't help but uh, feel really happy and just you know walk out of there at the end of the day knees hurting like all get out like Jesus Christ uh, you boy gotta lose some of that uh, Kelowna Chan world tour chub you know what I'm saying Oh uh, my God, going up them stairs and stuff. Whew. Gonna be losing some damn weight, I'll tell you that. But uh, it's all it's all good. It's all gonna be good for me. Uh, not just in the chubbage, but uh, also gonna be stacking some uh, Okane in the bank as well. So um, the job definitely is very generous with the pay. So feel really good about that. And uh, if all things go according to plan, like, you know, if I work just uh, twice a week, at least, then I'll be able to match what I make uh, working or going to school full time on the GI Bill. So if I can get, you know, two to three days a week, even during the school week, which is totally feasible, then uh, I'll be able to put some money away and uh, also have a little bit to help cover down during uh, months where the GI Bill isn't uh, coming in in full, like during breaks or coming in on a semester, it's usually when it's at its lowest, because you know there's days that you're not in school, and also during these break periods, not making any money. <laughs> so uh, this couldn't have come at a better time, and uh, I'm so excited to be uh, doing something I love, making them videos, and uh, getting paid for it, not having to, uh, do some other real job as well. So, yeah, things are definitely looking up. And also, and I uh, can't really talk too much about this, but there have also been other opportunities presented to me in terms of making them vids. So, uh, definitely a lot of opportunities for your boy, Andy Sansamadishta, on the horizon. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. You know, just even just thinking about it right now, it's, you know, filling me with a lot of that, like, adult happiness, if that makes any sense. You know how there's, like, kid happy where it's like, oh my god, life is great, and I'm so happy. 
that sort of like elated happiness. And then there's the adult happiness, which is just that kind of nice kind of just satisfaction. You know, just having a nice cool beer, at the end of a long work week, sitting back, just watching the ocean, watching the sunrise, just sitting back chilling, watch some TV, just adult happiness. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now, man. Like, uh, things are definitely on the up and up and uh, can't wait to uh, take you guys on the journey with me as well. So, I know I've rambled and raved long enough. So I think we'll, uh, we'll end things here. So, with all that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. It's out for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my September 2020 update video for, you guessed it, September 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, <sighs> breathe in that good ass prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna talk to you about is YouTube stuff. So, really proud of the recent videos I've been putting out for the Indie Japan channel. And you guys seem to like them too. So I definitely wanna keep making more of that quality Japan content in the same vein. I've really been focusing more on shooting relevant B-roll to the subject at hand, doing more in terms of storytelling, working on my pacing, things like that. But uh, I've been kind of torn on some things YouTube wise. And that is, you know, the overall amount that I'm getting from AdSense from that channel in comparison to my Edited by the Indie Sound channel, which is my video editing tutorial channel. So even though I don't post that much to that channel, it's still consistently raking in a good amount of money for me. I've just been kind of torn, you know, like creatively speaking, I really enjoy the content I've been putting out on my Andy Japandy channel, but the uh, Edited by the Andy Sound channel, even though I don't up update it all that often, still pulls in the lion's share of uh, my AdSense revenue. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I could put out some more tutorials, but really I'm not, <laughs> it's not really all that interesting to me to make video editing tutorial content, even though I know it does very well for the algorithm and uh, it does help teach people about how to edit videos and stuff like that. So I know it's, it's useful, but it's not really creatively fulfilling. I guess you could say. Um, so I was also considering maybe doing like a different type of series for that channel. I was also thinking about for my Creator 101 podcast, maybe doing kind of like video essay type content because my uh, video essay on The Truman Show did so well. You guys really seemed to like that video, even though it wasn't really intended for YouTube. It was just for my uh, art of film class. But uh, I was thinking about maybe doing like some video essays on well-known content creators and just kind of give you like an origin story for them. So for a lot of these rising creators who people don't really know about or know the full backstory, you got that to look at. And hopefully that would help get that channel monetized as well. And then in addition to that, also continue on the Creator 101 podcast. But yeah, just kind of torn on some things as far as that goes. And if you guys have any uh, suggestions as far as what I should do, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments down below, the boobity boops, and uh, I'll do my best to oblige. But I'm pretty sure I'll think of something, you know? <laughs> I always tend to, to figure things out eventually. But anyway, let's move on to some freelancing stuff. So um, as you guys know, I've been working as a videographer for an international school out in Tokyo, and that's been going pretty well. I uh, really love interacting with the kids and making that quality content for the parents. And uh, it's been paying pretty handsomely too. Don't want to get into specifics for obvious reasons, but I've been uh, doing pretty good with that. So definitely want to uh, keep that up. And uh, in addition to that, I've also made my cameraman debut on the Eric Mealtime channel for one Mr. Eric Surf 6. So as you guys know, I used to edit for Eric back in the day when I was still back in uh, Mercogen land, but uh, I recently made my cameraman debut for that channel where I both shot and edited the video. And uh, 
his his audience seems to uh, to really dig it. You know, it's uh, being very well received, and uh, it's his collaboration with Aaron from the Bento Buster channel, and uh, really had a lot of fun putting that one together and shooting it as well. Um, Eric's a good dude. Definitely want to uh, make more of that quality content with him as well. But it's just a matter of our schedules aligning. So uh, school started up for me last week. So I do that during the week. And then during the weekends, I do the uh, videographer stuff for the international school. So it's a bit of a trip to uh, try to align our schedules, but uh, definitely do want to make some more videos with Eric in the future. So uh, keep an eye out for that. So that said, let's move on to the personal life section. And uh, as I said before, uh, school started up for me last week. It's my last semester here at Lakeland University of Japan under the Associates program. and. Uh, Things have been going pretty good so far. Yeah, so the plans for me continue on at Lakeland University of Japan through the bachelor's program. But right now, time's recording, the bachelor's program hasn't been officially approved yet by the Ministry of Education, as well as the Ministry of Immigration. But as things change, obviously, I'll be sure to, uh, to let y'all know. That's my main plan moving forward once I graduate from, uh, from Lakeland at the end of this year, 2020. Woo. Uh, but barring that, uh, another plan I would have if uh, Lakeland didn't launch the bachelor's program by then is to transfer out to Temple University of Japan. Now, I know some of you guys might be wondering, well, Mandy San, you uh, failed a class last semester, which is the whole reason you're even uh, studying at Lakeland this semester. So why would Temple even give you the time of day now that your GPA is lower versus then when your GPA was in a much better place? Well. Simply put, once I pass my previously failed class, they'll wipe the uh, failing grade from my record and they'll replace it with a passing grade. So it'll be like I never failed in the first place. So my application to Temple is good for a year. So basically all I'd have to do is just send them an updated transcript from Lakeland and uh, talk with my uh, student liaison and uh, just go from there. So if that's not an option, my third and final option would be to transfer out to the main campus of Lakeland out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Now I did debate between that or their partner university out in uh, Virginia Beach, but considering the cost of living out in Virginia Beach versus out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, even though I'd be taking a significant cut in terms of BAH, going out there. It is the more enticing option as they do have a lot more affordable housing options for me to uh, continue my education out there should I decide to uh, take them up on that. And plus it seems to me like a, a much safer area anyway. You know, Virginia Beach, especially being a military town, uh, for those of you who live in military towns uh, in the US, most of them are kinda eh, a little, little yeah by a little, little scary as far as some things go. Before we end things here, there is something I, I kind of want to talk about as far as uh, some stuff that I heard uh, in comments elsewhere. So one of the comments I've been getting a lot of in some form or fashion is kind of talking about like, why do I even continue being on YouTube and continue doing YouTube despite my lack of perceived success? And uh, the simple answer is because I love YouTube love making videos, and I want to keep making videos. My goal is to be able to make a living making videos. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean making a living from YouTube videos, from my channels. Um, it just means making money from, uh, from doing videos, you know, whether it's uh, corporate work, client work, uh, working for other YouTube channels, whatever, you know? Whatever pays the bills and gives me that uh, sweet, sweet okane to uh, keep me fed and uh, keep a roof over my head. So one of the things that you know I've been talking about a lot, a lot lately is just the time that I've been on YouTube. And before it was kind of a cool thing because there was not a whole lot of creators that have been on the platform quite as long as I have that still continue to make content. And after a while, you know, people would see the uh, amount of time that I've been on YouTube growing and growing, but my views, subscribers, so on and so forth, staying about the same. You know, it became less of this kind of novelty of, oh man, this guy's still, still chugging along, and more of kind of an albatross around my neck as far as like, 
man, you're, you've been on YouTube almost 15 years and you still haven't quote, made it? You know, what, what the hell are you doing with your life? Like, Jesus, get a job already, fuck, you know? But like I said before, you know, I love making YouTube videos and uh, I wanna keep doing it. You know, even if uh, I make more money elsewhere, you know, I still consider YouTube to be uh, my passion and I wanna keep making videos on this platform as long as I can. As long as uh, YouTube's still around and kicking, definitely wanna keep making them vids. So despite, you know, whatever metric you wanna look at, you know, whether it's, you know, subs, views, comments, whatever, you know, that stuff doesn't really drive me to uh, to keep making videos, you know? It's uh, just, you know, I'd be making videos even if I wasn't making any money off of YouTube. That being said, you know, I do see a future a bit more long-term where, you know, maybe I'm not making as much stuff for myself on YouTube and focusing more on the, uh, the freelancing or, you know, client serving side of YouTube or just video making in general. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So, oh, <laughs> I almost forgot. There is one last update promise this time, but there's one last thing I do want to talk about that kind of fits into personal life and youtube -y stuff. So last thing, um, next week I'll be celebrating my five-year anniversary of getting out of the U.S. Navy on September 25th, 2015 is when I was officially discharged. And uh, I want to do some kind of fun video event type thing, uh, probably for the Andy Japandi channel, just because it's Japan related. But I uh, definitely want to do some kind of event out in Yokosuka to, uh, to celebrate. Uh, maybe invite some of my friends along to uh, go out for uh, a night on the town, you know, do a little haunch crawl and uh, pin up some spots and uh, just having a good time, you know? So uh, be on the lookout for uh, that video coming soon. And with all that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Time for now. And as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Welcome once again to my October 2020 update video for, you guessed it, October 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So <sighs> breathe in that good ass prana. And as always, Let's just jump right into it. And before I begin with any YouTube news, personal news, or any of that other stuff, I want to issue my condolences to the Van Halen family during this time. Today, legendary guitarist Eddie Van Halen passed away at the age of 65 due to throat cancer. Van Halen is uh, one of those bands that's always been there in some form or fashion in my life. Whether it was the uh, rockin' David Lee Roth era Van Halen, or even the Van Hagar era, Van Halen's always been a part of my life in some form or fashion. And uh, whenever I want to get pumped up for uh, either working on a video editing project or to work on schoolwork or whatever the case, I would usually look for some Eddie Van Halen solo videos on uh, YouTube, kind of get the blood pumping and uh, get me ready for the next project. And uh, yeah, sadly, the world has lost a very influential person. And uh, I just want to send out my condolences at this time. And so with that being said, let's move on to YouTube news. So first thing I want to talk to you guys about is that I bought myself a new laptop off of Amazon. Uh, it's going to be coming in next week. So I definitely plan on doing an unboxing as well as uh, giving you guys my review of not only my upcoming laptop, but my current laptop as well. And the reason that I bought myself a laptop is because of the litany of issues that I've been having with my current laptop over the past year since I've had it. Um, ranging from the screen just blacking out, I even had to send it back to the Asus factory to get it replaced. And uh, it lasted for about two weeks and then it finally gave up the ghost again. And it was at that point I decided to just get a, an external monitor because I didn't want to send it back to the factory again. But lately, it's also been going through a lot of system instability issues with Windows. I know, I can hear you Linux and Mac fanboys just yelling at me, oh my God, why didn't you get a MacBook? Oh my God, Linux for the win. Shut up, nerds. <laughs> I, I tried 
reinstalling Windows. I tried installing Windows on a completely new hard drive that I bought. It's basically been just kind of hanging in there at best. I just think it's time to uh, get something a bit more reliable, especially something with a working screen. And I'm really excited for this new laptop because it has the AMD Ryzen processor in it. So I've heard a lot of good things about it, not just in gaming, but also in productivity as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what that bad boy can do when it comes to uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. And the next thing I want to talk to you about is the rebranding of my channel, formerly known as Edited by the Andy Son. I decided to change the name of it to Adam Media, A-D-Y-M. That's an acronym. My mom would always say to me back when I was working for the production company in Ohio, after we were all done filming and all that stuff, they would hand the footage off to me and she'd be like, Andy, do your magic. In addition to the rebrand, I'm also going to be changing the focus for that channel a little bit. So in addition to the video editing tutorials that it's known for, I'm also going to be widening the focus to also include talking about some problems that creators may face on their journey and also want to get some guests as well to talk about their creative journey and process so you know, look out for new quality content coming soon and so the next thing i want to talk to you about are my recent military videos i definitely want to thank you guys for all the lovely comments and uh, personal messages it really does make a guy feel loved as far as that goes and it was definitely a uh, blast from the past you know looking at those old clips from my time on board USS Kurtz and also giving more of a retrospective for uh, my time on the outside since getting out of the Navy five years ago. It's really putting a lot of things into perspective. As far as making regular military content on this channel goes, uh, it's not really something I wanna pursue. Maybe on anniversaries or if something major happens, I can kind of talk about it from my perspective in the service, but it's not something I want to do on a consistent basis anymore. I think at this point in my life, uh, the Navy is going further and further in the rearview mirror. This December is going to mark me being out of the Navy longer than I was in the Navy. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is my Andy Japandy channel. So I know I haven't been making a whole lot of content on that channel lately, um, but I'm going to be putting out a video talking about a little challenge that I did for myself this past month, and that was to live as cashless as possible in Japan. So I'm really enjoying these like month long challenges that I've been putting on myself and I'm definitely learning a lot. So be on the lookout for uh, that video coming soon. And so the next thing I want to talk to you about as far as any Japandi content goes, my experiences at a Japanese dentist. So I've had some work done on uh, one of my back teeth here. I was really worried about getting work done here in Japan, uh, especially because I've heard a lot of horror stories about Japanese dentists not wanting to use a whole lot of anesthetic. It's ranging from maybe just a little baby shot and some children's aspirin and gabari masho. <laughs> And you know, I was really, really nervous about going in to the dentist for the first time. Thankfully, definitely found a good one that I want to recommend to y'all once all my work is finished. I'm going to talk to you about my experiences and also how much it costs. So Americans, eat your heart out. And so the last little bit of YouTube news that I want to talk to y'all about is the Creator 1-1 podcast. Now I know I really haven't been making a whole lot of uh, content for that channel lately either. And that's just because of, well, life and other scheduling conflicts that uh, happens, you know, going to school and doing freelance work and all this, that, and the other. So it's just one of the channels that kind of was a casualty of that. But my plans for that channel moving forward are to be more of an accompaniment channel to my Adam Media channel. So I want to have, you know, full length podcast episodes on that channel, maybe throw a couple highlights onto the Adam Media channel, just to kind of get you interested in the full length podcast. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is my freelancing. So uh, things are kind of the same as they ever were. I'm still working as a videographer uh, for school out in Tokyo. Really doing well with that. Uh, making a lot of good videos. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you those due to privacy reasons, uh, but I am really enjoying my time out there and uh, you know, just getting to hang around kids. You know, they're a very optimistic bunch. You know, even if I'm having a really bad day or a bad week, you know, just going in and uh, filming them while they're learning stuff definitely helps uh, build up the old Coke Rose, you know? And uh, I definitely feel a lot better um, at the end of the day once uh, I'm all done filming. 
So in addition to that, I'm also doing some freelance video editing for uh, my friend Eric from the Eric Surf 6 channel. Uh, we've really been doing a lot of projects together and there's also plans for us to do uh, some filming together as well. So uh, once our schedules line up, because uh, we're both pretty busy beavers at the moment, uh, but once we get a little break in, uh, in work and stuff and schedules line up, then uh, definitely do have plans to uh, film some Eric Mealtime videos. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the one video that I shot for him as the cameraman, uh, really enjoyed that. But there was definitely a lot of room for improvement, I think, for me. But really looking forward to uh, making some of that quality EMT content as well. So uh, be on the lookout for that. So now let's move on to the personal life section. So starting off with uh, school over at Lakeland University of Japan. Uh, we're going to be doing midterms next week, so I'm going to be pretty busy then. And uh, it doesn't seem like we're halfway through the semester already. It seems like just a few weeks ago we started things off again. But uh, yeah, we're uh, halfway there. Whoa! <laughs> so uh, yeah, one of the things that I really noticed that's different about this semester versus uh, my previous semesters here at Lakeland is that there's more of a focus on group projects. So uh, a lot of the classes that I'm in have major group projects versus like a big final project that each individual student has. And it's a very interesting dynamic to uh, be working with other people for the final project versus just me doing everything. And as far as if it'll end up on YouTube, like my uh, video essay did, just depends. Since I'm not the only one doing this, if uh, I get the go-ahead from everybody, I'm more than willing to uh, put my project up on uh, on this channel here for y'all to see. So be on the lookout for that coming soon, maybe. And so as far as the status of my continuing education out here in Japan goes, I've been talking with Lakeland about the status of their four-year program out here in Japan. And it's pretty much the same as it ever was uh, from the last time I talked to them in the previous semester. I've decided to look a bit more seriously at uh, transferring out to the home campus out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And as much as I'd love to stay out here in Japan, right now I don't really have a degree. And even if I get the associate's degree, it's not something that I can get a work visa with. So my options are pretty limited as far as staying in Japan goes. More than likely, I'm gonna be transferring out to the, uh, the main campus in Sheboygan, Wisconsin at the end of this year, very early next year, 2021. Ooh, so while it sucks that uh, my Japan journey will be coming to an end very soon, uh, it's just one of those things, you know? And if anything, I'm definitely grateful of the time that I do have out here in Japan, not only what I have left, but uh, of the time that I did get to spend out here, despite uh, the circumstances. I can definitely leave Japan with no regrets. And this also kind of leads into something I've been thinking about a lot as far as uh, making Japan-based content goes. Obviously, when I first came out to Japan, I was really looking forward to making a lot of Japan content for the Any Japan -E channel. You know, showing you guys around different parts of Japan, talking about my experiences as a study abroad student, uh, you know, maybe getting some fellow students in the videos and showing you around campus and all that fun stuff. But obviously with uh, old Kelowna Chan World Tour, kind of put the kibosh on that. And I've largely been uh, doing the online schooling, so you can't even go to campus because it's locked down unless you have an appointment. And uh, all the students are pretty much locked away in either their apartments, their homes, whatever the case may be. And it's also got me thinking about just making travel content in general, especially during this time when really not a whole lot of people can uh, can travel or really should travel, <laughs> to be honest. That's one of the reasons I also wanted to branch out more into uh, content creation, content, you know, as far as talking about like video editing tutorials and stuff like that with, uh, with Adam Media. So that way I can branch off to, to something else because I knew that uh, my time in Japan, at least this run, would be limited. So I figured uh, it was best to have a bit of a fallback option as far as making content goes because I didn't want to make stuff where my main personality was, I'm in Japan. You know, I feel like I'm more than that, you know? And I wanted to showcase that to you guys uh, with my other channels. Now I have a pretty good grasp on what I want to do and I want to keep pursuing it, you know, doing the freelance video editing and uh, just Take it from there. Looking more at the uh, the long term as far as that goes, and you know, either being part of a company like a production company or starting a production company of my own. Just gotta take it one day at a time, one project at a time, and uh, just go from there. 
think of. I've rambled and raved long enough in this uh, this little update update video here. So, like I said, guys, this is the Andy Sound. Sign up for now. And as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and we gotta talk. So, I know my last couple videos have been a little upsetting for some people. So, after thinking about it for a couple days, I decided to pull those videos back and decided to change the Andy Japandi channel back into the Andy Japandi channel. Um, so, the videos aren't gonna be moved to this channel, they're gonna still stay on that channel and you know just keep things as they were as far as that goes but that being said i do want to do anime video essays at some point so if i do decide to go forward with them i want to put them on the andy japandi channel because you know it's anime it's japan it works <laughs> so um we'll put them on that channel instead of this one so we'll just see how it goes from there. So that's what's going on as far as as far as that channel goes. But ultimately today I wanted to talk to you about just my own future on YouTube, really. So again, in addition to the whole Andy Japandi thing, I've just been doing a lot of thinking about just what the hell I'm even doing on YouTube right now. You know, I've been been on the platform for uh, for going on 15 years. It'll be uh, next year, and you know I've built up an audience, and you know I see you guys in the comments and everything, and it definitely makes makes a guy feel loved to uh, see you guys interacting in the comments and stuff, and watching the vids and you know like commenting, subscribing, all the YouTuber shit that uh, everybody has to fucking tell people to do. So, but it is good to see you guys uh, doing those things. And, uh, you know, it's just, but one of the things is that with, uh, with freelance video editing, I've been doing it since 2016. So for going on five years now, and I've seen the most success doing that editing for other people. And companies and whatnot. You know, I've seen the most uh, financial success, views, success, working for other people. And while I am very grateful and appreciative for those who have given me the opportunity to show what I can do and uh, stuff like that, you know, as as a creator, I can't help but feel a little envious, if anything, about you know, not getting similar views to my own content that I put together. And I realized that, you know, I should focus on like one topic, one niche and just go ham on that. But I don't know, my creative process is kind of all over the place. If you guys couldn't tell by now. And, but at the same time, it's just really frustrating you know, to see things that you put together have their success while other things that you put together for you and, and your channels um, get just a, uh, a small fraction of what the other guys get. You know, it just makes you kind of doubt your own abilities. And, you know, it's just one of those, one of those things that's really hard for me to deal with, you know, and it, it, I know this all sounds like, you know, first world problems like, oh my God, get a fucking real job. Jesus Christ. You know, so I understand that. And, um, but at the same time, it's just really hard to, to deal with that. And, you know, with, with me getting older, you know, it's just, it's harder and harder to get the energy to work all the time on my own videos. You know, like if I'm not busy either doing homework or uh, working for other channels or companies and whatnot, you know, trying to put together my own stuff and just trying to 
make it all work at the same time honestly is is just a fool's errand and i was crazy to just even try it but uh earlier this month i've just hit a wall with everything that's that's been going on and obviously something had to give and that's something for me is is youtube so i've decided to take a break from all my channels this isn't going to be a permanent thing i will come back eventually but i think it's just best right now to just take a break reassess and come back stronger and i know i've made these i'm taking a break from youtube hiatus videos a whole bunch only to come back a few days later but i think even if i do feel better after a few days i'm still going to give myself some more time to to really think about what i want to do on youtube or even if i want to do youtube anymore because like i said you know I've been doing it for almost 15 years and you know when i was closing in on my on my 10 year anniversary on youtube back in 2016 um i thought it was just really cool to have been a creator for that long on the platform and you know, i just got to show just my process and me essentially growing up you know like i started youtube when i was 20 and you know, i'm gonna be 35 in a couple months so it's just cool to see to go back and, and see all the old videos that i did you know when when i was just uh living out in ohio with my folks trying to figure out where the hell to go in my life after i joined the navy or my whole time in it's been documented here on youtube and even after i got out you know i documented my struggles readjusting to college life american life civilian life all those things and i've also documented my process in coming back out here to japan and i've also documented my time out here in japan although sadly i haven't documented quite as much as i wanted to out here in japan due to uh cologne chan world tour among other things so gotta admit that that part's been a little frustrating for me as well but i think overall it's just uh you know one of those things where i know i can make good content the numbers reflect that with the people that i make content for and you know for people who aren't on youtube you know the corporate videos and stuff that i put together they're seeing success with more clients coming in and all this other stuff thanks in part to my videos so like i have the skills obviously <laughs> to put this stuff together. It's not like I'm a dad with a camcorder doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. You know, I have very tangible, real numbers success, right? But at the same time, as as a creator and someone who's been doing it for going on 15 years, it's still frustrating to, to see that your videos only get so many viewers and only get so many comments. And it sounds like a complete put down to to my regular audience which it's not like this this is not an indictment on you guys in the slightest i'm incredibly grateful for you guys' support and without you guys i would have nobody to talk to i mean i'd probably get more of a dialogue just talking to my walls over here um but it's thanks to you guys that i have any semblance of interaction at all and uh, especially out here in Japan with the uh, old Kelowna Chan World Tour in full effect and me doing online classes and everybody else keeping their social distance. Um, you know, I felt like YouTube and work and all that was, was all I had. You know, and if I'm not seeing any success out of YouTube, no matter how much I love it and put my heart and soul into it, it just you know, something has to give after a while. And it's just that kind of frustration because I do want to be an editor and I do want to help build other channels up. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, I still have ideas to contribute and things that I want to do for my channels. And when I try to do those, it's just it's one of those things where 
It's like you love it, but it doesn't really love you back. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, ultimately, the, uh, at the end of the day, it's on me to create content that you guys want to see. And I'm thankful and appreciative for those who do watch my content and do like, comment, and subscribe, and all that youtube shit that everybody likes to remind everybody to do, which I already said, so if you haven't done that already. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm sorry this is just unedited. I have a whole bunch of stuff I gotta take care of, so I didn't want to sit down and edit this mess of a, fu <laughs> of a fucking update video. So basically, made this far in the video. Thank you so much for watching. The TLDR is that I'm going to be taking a break from YouTube for a little bit to uh, get my shit together upstairs. And uh, I'm hoping to come back to YouTube harder, better, faster, stronger, and uh, have a real plan set in place. So, anyway. This is not goodbye. Let's see you next time. So, with that said, guys, it's a... Uh, Get some extra motivation because it might be a while before I see you guys next. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Signed for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And welcome to my November 2020 update video for, you guessed it, November 2020. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly open day videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, whew, breathing that good as prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. And this month, the YouTube stuff and the personal life stuff intermingle. So I'm not gonna have hard sections for YouTube stuff and personal life stuff. So let's just get into it, right? So let's talk about burnout, <laughs> more specifically, my burnout. So, times recording, I took about two weeks off from doing YouTube, although I did cheat a little bit with uh, some live streams, but as far as making like regular scheduled pre-recorded content, I haven't made anything in the past two weeks or so. And the reason for that was I was just feeling overwhelmed by my work schedule. So it was really hard for me to balance YouTube stuff with freelancing work, other work commitments, and school, especially with school ramping up with uh, final projects and finals going to be coming due here in the next few weeks. So I have to divert most of my attention to that. That was just going to be too much for me. So I decided to just take a couple weeks off from doing YouTube to really think about what I want to do moving forward on YouTube. And not going to lie, it was really hard for me to, uh, to take that break from YouTube because, you know, throughout these going on 15 years, of me doing YouTube, I've never really taken like a solid break like that before. Like I've taken like maybe a week or so off. It was just really hard because like I still had plenty of ideas for content and still had the, the desire to do it, but it was just getting to be too much for me stress-wise trying to maintain everything. You know, I thought long and hard about what I want to do moving forward on YouTube. And I gotta thank you guys for all the comments, messages, during that period. Um, it's really helped me think about what type of content I wanna make moving forward. And uh, I'm really appreciative. Definitely makes the guy feel loved, <laughs> for sure. My best friend, Eric, also known as Ariopolis, twitch.tv slash Ariopolis. If you guys are into uh, Fate Grand Order type content, he streams that from uh, Merkage and Land. So, sure to give him a follow. Tell him the Andy Sound sent you. <laughs> um, but anyway, we were talking uh, for a couple days ago about some stuff. One of the things that came up was just the type of content I've been making for the past 15 years, and that was mostly revolving around the goings on in my personal life. You know, whether I was in the Navy, in Japan, in Japan while being in the Navy, in Japan again while being not in the Navy, if you couldn't tell from the scruff. <laughs> um, but it all revolved around some aspect of my life. And that was fine for a while, but I think at this point in my life, my day-to-day -day life really isn't all that interesting, really. You know, I'm either here doing classes, or here doing uh, video work, or just here, you know? <laughs> Especially with all the uh, Kelowna Chan World Tour still very much in effect. 
It's really put the kibosh on a lot of my initial plans with uh, making Japan content. So that leads me to what I want to do moving forward, which is focus a lot less on personal content. So for this channel, uh, this has always been like my personal channel slash miscellaneous channel. So basically just stuff that doesn't fit in with my other channels, I put it up here. So this was never really meant to be a, uh, a channel where I post that regular, consistent, quality content. Well, consistent content anyway. <laughs> but I digress. So I never really intended to, to grow this channel in the sense of like a normal YouTube channel. This is just meant to be a uh, creative repository. I'm not going to be posting quite as often to this channel as I was before. Uh, especially with uh, final projects and everything coming due at the end of the semester. I'm not going to be posting that many videos for the next couple weeks. Um, once the semester's over, I'm going to be uh, posting more, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. So, as far as this channel goes, uh, I still do want to post personal content, but like I said, not quite to the extent that I was before. And in doing this, I'm going to be phasing out uh, my monthly update videos. So, I figured it was just uh, kind of getting in the way sometimes with uh, other types of content that I want to make because, you know, I look at the calendar, it's like, oh shit, it's a new month, I gotta put out a new update video where I sit, where I talk for 20 minutes about nothing, <laughs> you know? Because there, there are some months where not a whole lot going on or not a whole lot to really say about the type of content I want to make for that month because either I don't have any ideas that I'm working on by the time I make these videos or and I'm already hot and heavy into some other ideas that I don't have time to make the video or other commitments. It's just uh, one of those things I'm gonna be phasing out. So I am gonna be doing uh, my last monthly update video next month in December to round out the year. But after that, um, the vlogs are just gonna be on like a case by case basis. And as for the Andy Japandi channel, that was another thing that was uh, discussed because again, with, with that channel, Originally, I wanted it to be a continuation of my original Andy Japandi series on this channel, where I go to all these different locations in Japan, show them off, especially with uh, my awesome 4K camera and uh, with what I've learned in the past, you know, five some years since I was uh, stationed in Yokosuka. And with uh, old Clone Chan World Tour, definitely put the, the kibosh on that. So I switched from it being more of a travel channel to kind of talking about my experiences being abroad in Japan. But in making that sort of content, I kind of, kind of came across some things that I wasn't really too keen about. Somebody brought up the point of, you know, the problem with most of these J-vloggers is that their whole personality is being in Japan. And I felt like I was kind of leaning towards uh, that side of the spectrum after a while too. And I really started getting worried because I'm like, you know, I have other interests outside of just, I'm in Japan. Look at all this Japan stuff. You know, look at the fucking wood paneling and all that stuff. Japan, right? And I wanted to to talk about those those things. But in the context of, of a J-vlog, it might not be all that interesting, you know, because people want to see all the, you know, the cool Japan stuff that, you know, really does well in the West, you know, like, oh, kooky vending machines, and oh, should be a crossing, and oh my gosh, wacky Japan, in it? Not that I'm opposed to doing those things. If you have seen the Mr. Peachy stuff, it's kind of a uh, satire on those types of videos. But I feel, I feel like, you know, at this point, it's, it's kind of played out. That leads me to the next piece of business, which is my Ad Media channel. Over the past few months, I've just been looking through my analytics just to see like what content has been doing the best, which gets the most views, most money, you know, which of my channels is overall doing the best. The leader in all that for the past, not even just past couple months, past couple years, if we're, if we're being real here, has been the Adam Media channel, formerly known as Edited by the Andy Son, where I share video editing tutorials and stuff like that. And I've been really struggling with it because while I do like making video editing tutorial content, I feel like the type of content I was making, you know, it's really fast, short video editing tutorials. It's almost like too easy to make those. Cause really like the only editing I do is just cutting out the long pauses and the flub takes and all that sorts of stuff. And then adding some keyframes to like zoom in on critical material and well, there you go, there's a the tutorial. And I wasn't really getting any creative fulfillment for making those videos. I think I'd be wrong. Like I said, I do like making the videos and I'm 
glad that they are enjoyed by a lot of people out there and they're helping educate people on how to use Premiere Pro and all that sorts of stuff, but they weren't really scratching that creative itch. So I got down to thinking about uh, different types of content that I want to put on that channel. You know, I was looking at uh, other channels that I watch regularly, like uh, Roberta Blake, Sarah Dietschy, and I wanted to make Adam Media more akin to, to those types of channels. So not really so much as like a make it big on YouTube type channel, because right now that channel isn't really at that category where I have the authority to say like, this is what you're gonna do when you make it big on YouTube. This is how to get your channel big on YouTube and be big time YouTuber. And you know, this is a real job, mom. <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. But I can talk about different aspects of being a freelancer different aspects of being a creative. The whole idea was to interview creatives with the Creator 101 podcast, which is why I merged it into that channel rather than having it be its own separate channel. And I also want to make different types of content that's geared more towards film production, stuff like that. So learning how to do like shot breakdowns. That was another interesting thing. So another channel I've been following is uh, Hilliard Smith. Um, he is the video editor for Logan Paul. So he's been making a lot of good like shot breakdowns for certain types of content. And I know other editors have done this. I mean, Justin Odisho is the first one that I thought of doing shot breakdowns, but he mostly just does it for uh, music videos, whereas Hayden does it for uh, vlogs and other types of content, just to kind of show you what goes into a lot of these highly viewed vlogs. And that it's more than just, you know, a wacky thumbnail and a catchy title and all this other stuff, you know, it's, really interesting to see these uh, these deep dives. And that's something else that you guys have been mentioning too, is getting more into like the, the nitty gritty behind certain editing choices. So I was thinking of making content kind of sort of like reacting to stuff that I've edited, as well as breaking down shots from other YouTubers, just kind of showing different aspects that people don't really think about. And just uh, really thinking deeply, as uh, Eric Wen would say, about uh, making content rather than just listening to the same old tired platitudes by a lot of these get big on YouTube channels. Like, how do you get big on YouTube? You make that quality content and you just keep making that quality content and that's all you do. And it's just that easy. And while there's nothing false about that, it just seems like it doesn't really tell the whole story or really give you anything actionable to do. It's just, you know, if you make a good product then people will buy it. It's kind of that that feel the dreams, you know, if you build it, they will come sort of thing. And that's, that's not always the case. And then another little passion project I want to get into is doing video essays. I got a lot of good responses from my Truman Show video essay I did a couple months back. And I wanted to do more of that style of content with anime, but I didn't want to put it on my other channels because, you know, in the event that it would get copyright claimed, I didn't want it to affect my channel because uh, I've seen a lot of anti-tubers get their channels removed or like copyright struck to hell. But with the Truman Show video, it's just like ineligible for monetization. But with anime, they, uh, they're pretty strict about uh, fair use and, and things like that. So you have to be a little careful. So I figured just in the event to uh, safeguard the rest of my channels, uh, I'll just put that on its own separate channel. So in case something happens, it's just that channel and none of my other content gets affected. So I decided to repurpose the old Creator 101 podcast channel into Andy Anime, which is gonna be the home for my anime video essay content I'm gonna be working on. Uh, but again, all these uh, different video ideas and everything, that's not really gonna be worked on until after the semester because grades come first. Yeah, once the semester's over and I get a better idea of what's going on with me as far as visas, jobs, and all that kinds of stuff, then I'll be able to, to settle down and make that quality content. So yeah, that's uh, basically all I, want, all I wanted to say in this little update video. Uh, once again, there's gonna be one more update video between now and then, and after that, I'm just gonna be doing vlogs on a case-by-case -case basis for this channel. 
in addition to uh, other types of content as well. So, uh, with all I said, guys, I just want to thank you for all the support you give me during my little YouTube hiatus. I look forward to seeing you um, when I really come back to YouTube um, after the semester's over. So, with all I said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now, and as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome to my December 2020 update video for, you guessed it, December 2020. Ooh, so yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, <sighs> read that good ass prana. And as always, let's just jump right into it. And for this month's update video, uh, there's gonna be a lot of things that intersect with each other. So there's not really gonna be any clear cut sections this time around, so bear with me. As far as YouTube stuff goes, I know I haven't really been making a whole lot of that quality content lately. And that's mostly just been due to uh, finals, final projects, as well as getting my visa situation taken care of. I'm proud to say that I officially graduated from Lakeland University, Japan with my associate's degree. And I got that on my birthday as well. So that was a fun belated birthday surprise when I went to go pick it up. Feels pretty good to uh, finally have my first post-secondary education degree. And as a nice little 35th birthday present, not too shabby. Since graduating, I've gone and submitted paperwork to change my visa status to that of a job hunting visa. So job hunting visa is technically a designated activities visa. With that, I'll be able to stay in Japan for up to a year while I continue to look for jobs, do some part-time work, and just go from there. So the plan is for 2021 to go through with the job hunting visa. And then once Lakeland starts up their bachelor's program, which the time's recording should be in the summer 2021, then I'll just switch back to a student visa and continue on for my bachelor's degree. So I got picked up for a couple of really good gigs recently. I just been in talks with someone who is in charge of the current company that I work for. So they're basically like the parent company, essentially. That's the best way I can describe it. They want me to uh, to work for them. So if all goes according to plan, that's going to be my main source of income until I go back to school. Yeah, things are looking really good for your boy, the Andy San Samadeshta. And I gotta say, this year has not been what I expected at all. In more ways than one, not just in the negative, but also in the positive as well. When I first came back to Japan at the end of 2019, it was with the intention of not only going to school to get my degree, but to also resurrect the Andy Japandi series and to make that quality Japan content that I've been looking forward to, to making ever since I left the country back in 2015. But as you guys know, uh, life has other plans. So old Cloney Macaroni threw a uh, monkey wrench into that. So I've been stuck basically making videos here in my room. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I thought that like once I got back to Japan, I would stop making videos in my room and would instead just go out and make some videos. But then I got sent back to my room and all I could do is make videos in here, uh, at least from an ethical standpoint, you know? Obviously there's other content creators who don't really have such qualms about making content out and about during this time. For me, I kind of struggled with it, you know? Like, obviously Japan's a lot safer than in other countries in terms of handling the invites to uh, Cologne Chan World Tour, but I still felt weird, you know, going out there and filming stuff, you know, especially during this time where, you know, everybody's in their rooms, much like I am, or, you know, they've lost their jobs, just barely scraping by based off of savings and what little they get from unemployment. I don't know, it just, it didn't feel right. Be making content where I'm just gallivanting around Japan with that, you know, wide-eyed foreigner face, like, oh, wow, magical. At the same time, I still wanted to make content, so that's why I switched over to focus more on the Andy Talks 
Japandi series. And that series went pretty well for a while, but then, you know, I came across the uh, the problem of, because I've been in my room most of the time, you know, do my part in uh, stopping the invites, I kind of ran out of Japan experience to talk about. And also with a work schedule and a school schedule ramping up, it was just getting hard to uh, to balance everything. Earlier this, uh, this semester, in the fall, I definitely went through a really bad case of burnout, but it was a lot different than the usual cases of burnout I've gone through. Cause like, I've been doing this YouTube thing for going on 15 years at this point. So I've had my fair bouts of burnout before. And usually I figure just kind of take it easy from YouTube for like a week or two. I'll come back better than ever. But this time it was just so hard, you know, I just didn't have the energy to make the videos. I had plenty of ideas unlike my other times of burnout where I just couldn't think of anything to uh, to talk about. But I just didn't have the energy and in a lot of cases, especially near the end of the semester, I didn't have the time because I had to focus on getting final projects or studying for finals or working on switching my visa over so I could get the paperwork all lined up. There's a whole myriad of stuff. After I got done with, uh, with school and submitted my paperwork to immigration, which that's like a whole story in and of itself, really. Where I went to like Shinagawa, then later uh, Tachikawa, and then finally at the uh, Kawasaki office where I submitted my paperwork. So they should be getting back to me within uh, a couple weeks or so, from what I've been told. But in the meantime, I can still work and do my thing. But you know, all that said, I'm my own harshest critic. So even though I may think that I didn't really do much of anything this year. Like looking back, like I did a whole bunch of stuff. You know, first and foremost, I got my degree. 16 years after graduating high school, I finally got my first post-secondary degree. And yes, it's an associate's, but you know, it's the first step, man. But ultimately, once I go back into the Lakeland system, they'll have to recalculate my credits based on the bachelor program because when I enrolled with the associates, I basically maxed out my transfer credits. Got to figure out just how many uh, credits they'll be willing to accept on the VA side of things. So looking to allow for veterans who paid into the Montgomery GI Bill to eventually get those benefits once they're post 9-11 benefits have been exhausted. It's still in the works. Nothing's really super official yet. You know, they're still battling it out in court, but uh, things are looking pretty good. I feel pretty confident that uh, I'll be able to, to use those benefits, but until something's made official, you know, can't bet on it, bet on it just yet. But with that, then I'll be able to use an additional year of benefits, be able to get my bachelor's for sure. I do want to announce that this is going to be the last uh, monthly update video. I've decided to get rid of the monthly update videos just because I don't usually have a lot of interesting news to say every month. So I figure instead of making it just a monthly thing, we'll just make it on a as it is basis, you know? So if I do have something I want to announce, I'll make a video for it, but I'm not just going to make a video because, oh, well, it's, it's a new month. Better crank out that update video where I talk you know, 15 minutes about nothing, basically. There will still be vlogs on this channel. And then for the uh, Adam Media channel, I have a lot of ideas for content for that channel in particular. And as for the Andy Japandi channel, uh, you d definitely better believe that I have some ideas. And now with um, things starting to clear up, definitely a lot of different locations just around Tokyo and Kanagawa that I want to not only visit, but revisit as well. Knowing what I know now about editing and camera work and stuff like that, I definitely want to up my game as far as that goes. I also want to do a lot more collaborations as well, but those will be on a when we can fit it in sort of basis. I'm also getting back into playing the video games for my birthday slash Christmas slash graduation. I decided to get myself a Nintendo Switch and I got the uh, the Pokemon Sword game as well as uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of Duelist game. So it's definitely a good nostalgicasm going back to uh, the two franchises that, you know, really did it for me a lot as a child. I've been playing Pokemon since you know, the first gen when it came out. And you're never too old to be a Pokemon master. And then for Yu-Gi-Oh, like I remember playing the old Game Boy Advance games when I was in study hall. And that allowed me to learn the mechanics of Yu-Gi-Oh far faster than just playing with friends. Definitely feels good to be uh, playing it again. I think it's the first game I've had for Yu-Gi-Oh in like 15, 16 years. I think I've rambled and raved long enough in uh, our final uh, monthly 
update video. Still gonna be doing update videos, but they're gonna be on an as needed basis. Just wanting things by thanking you guys for all the support over this year and previous years. I know there's a lot of OGs still following me, so definitely appreciate you guys. And even for the newbies that are following me as well. Thanks to you guys that I managed to keep my sanity somewhat during this incredibly difficult time. I'm really looking forward to entering 2021 with a bunch of positivity and a lot of ideas for making that quality content. So, that's all I said, guys. This is the Andy San. Sign up for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Andy here. And today, just want to make a little raw, uncut video to uh, to talk to you guys about some stuff. So I'm in the middle of working on some new Eric Mealtime videos. So I didn't want to sit down and make like an edited video today because I uh, took the holidays off and I got to catch up on some stuff. But in any event, I just wanted to talk to you guys about some things I've been thinking about for a while now. And that is just kind of where do I go on YouTube? You know, not really like a, what type of videos should I talk about? What kind of videos are you guys interested in? Uh, it goes a little beyond that. So as you guys know, I've been saying for a while now, I've been on the YouTube platform for going on 15 years now. And I just turned 35 earlier this month. And I'm starting to look at, <laughs> as I'm looking at myself in the monitor here. But uh, I've just been thinking about, you know, what do I, where do I go from here as far as my own YouTube stuff goes? Um, I've just been really busy putting together videos for other people, whether it's other YouTube channels or uh, other production companies, things like that. And it's left me with less and less time, and especially now that I'm getting older, less and less energy to want to sit down and make my own stuff. And it's something I've been really um, trying to come to terms with as far as where do I go on YouTube. And you know, I've just been of the mentality that I've been doing this for so long that I don't want to, to give up on it completely, you know? And I've been trying to, to balance the two things, you know, just have my personal YouTube -y stuff and just kind of the Andy Japan -y stuff and then the video editing tutorials and just kind of have that as more of like a, a side hobby sort of deal. And then the, uh, the paid work is its own thing. But, you know, with more and more paid work coming in, it's starting to affect um, just my own videos. That I want to put out, put out because it's made me very inconsistent in terms of things. Um, you know, it's just been really hard to to balance and get some sort of a of consistency and a schedule and all that with uh, my own content. And I feel really bad because I know you guys have been wanting some more like anti Japani content where I go out and uh, explore Japan, but obviously with uh, what's going around <laughs> out there, it's, uh, it's a little difficult, but, you know, hopefully, you know, things will start clearing up a little bit next year, 2021. Ooh. So I'm, I'm hoping to make some more content out there. At least that was the plan anyway, but just the more I've been thinking about it, I just don't know how long I got left on, on YouTube. You know, it's YouTube used to be just kind of a fun little hobby where you share your life and get to talk with other people and just kind of do your thing. And, you know, there wasn't like too much seriousness behind it, but YouTube has just gotten like so competitive over these past couple of years to where like, if you're not going, you know, hardcore into something and if you're not like doing YouTube full time, basically, then nobody's gonna watch your, your channel. Nobody's gonna watch your videos. Nobody's gonna give a fuck about you. And you'll just get lost in the algorithm, you know? So then you'll end up with just like a handful of views and maybe a good job comment and a whole bunch of spam bots and all this other shit. And it's hard, man, it's hard. You know, I see a lot of really good channels out there and 
you know, want to see them do good, but it's really hard to, to break through all the noise. And for my situation in particular, it's, it's really different because, you know, I'm still making content, just not for myself and my channels. It's for, for other people. And that content's doing really well. And, you know, I do feel, you know, a sense of, of pride in putting together that content, you know, and seeing not only how my clients react to it, but also how their audiences react to it too. And, you know, it gives me a really, really good, uh, deep sense of, of satisfaction. So people can try to dunk on me for my low numbers and all this, that, and the other. But to me, it's just kind of irrelevant really, because, <laughs> you know, I get my satisfaction elsewhere. But at the same time, you know, I still feel like I have something to contribute as a content creator in my own right. But, you know, it's just hard to, to make that balance, you know, to, to balance out this influx of gigs and opportunities coming my way um, versus trying to do my own thing and setting aside time uh, to make my own content. Not to mention just time for myself to just be a person, you know. Um, I went and bought myself a Nintendo Switch as a graduation slash birthday slash Christmas gift to myself earlier this month. And it's just been so liberating to just sit down and play video games without having to worry about, oh, what did somebody say on Twitter? Oh, shit, did I answer comments on Instagram? Oh, did I miss uh, some comments on YouTube? What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? You know, because I don't want to neglect my audience because I don't want to be one of those like big fancy YouTubers who doesn't talk to their audience. You know, I'm, I pride myself on my engagement with you guys, you know, even though, yeah, you know, if you want to compare numbers, I don't have a whole lot relative to other YouTubers. But, you know, those metrics aren't what I measure my success in. It's, you know, in talking with you guys and having that good, strong sense of community. That's what I measure my success with. But, you know, just over the years, it's just been really difficult trying to to balance everything out. And you know, I've just been feeling really bad about the whole situation, you know, because it's just <laughs> it kind of is what it is, you know. Like, do I focus more on developing myself as a video editor for hire? Or do I go more all in with my own content? And at this point, you know, I've been trying to balance the two, but it's getting getting to like a critical point to where I won't be able to do that anymore. So um, I think, you know, in addition to it being the holidays and views are going to be down now that Christmas is over because leading into quarter one, nobody's really going to be watching a whole lot of YouTube. So... I think I'm just going to take some time to uh, to really reflect on some things. Uh, I might put out videos, but no guarantees. But I think I'm just going to take some time to uh, to think about things and figure out like where I really want to go on YouTube, if I want to continue doing YouTube. And yeah, I really am uh, looking forward to hearing you guys' thoughts in the comments down below in the boopy de boops as far as uh, what I should do with this uh, particular situation because I don't want to abandon you guys. You know, you guys have really helped keep me sane during these very uncertain times. But at the same time, you know, I got to start thinking more about uh, the, my uh, finances and building myself up. And if I really want to be about this video editor life, then I got to get my ass on with that. So just kind of where I'm at right now. So sorry if this video is a little all over the place, but uh, I just wanted to, uh, to talk about some things that have been on my mind for a while. So with all that said, guys, this is the Andy San signing for now. And as always and forever, we'll see you next time, maybe. <laughs> Catch you later, guys. Bye.